What up, Fight World? We back. We had some technical difficulties, but again, it looks like we back. Make sure you smash the like button. We got to get back what we lost. You know it's me, Ego, the boss. Just here to talk some boxing. See what's up with y'all. How you doing? Get ready for all these fights. Tonight on Fight Night. Let's go, let's get it. Ego Mafia. I told you, it's Ego Army, Ego Mafia. We are the mob. Money on top of boxing. Let's get it, let's go. Smash the like button. We can't let the haters control what we doing. We just gotta keep doing what we doing. And all their plans are ruined if they choose to hate. Boxing Ego the Great. Let's get it. I'm so ready. And you know I'm with it. We're going to put your feet to the fire in the hot seat. If you don't come correct, you will get beat on this side. Here we go again, big dog. I think I figured out the, the problem. What's up with the hats, man? See, I, I guess I want to be the only one rocking the hats. Man, the hats coming. Um, when YouTube... On the very first stream, when YouTube crashed, the when the, when the whole stream crashed, it, I don't know what the fuck it does, but it crashes. But at the same time, when I try to do a new stream, it kind of, it built an, another stream in terms of the title, but it was trying to combine the likes and, and the super chats and all that from the first stream. So basically, I think that's why I got super laggy because the, there, in essence, there was two streams open. So I just canceled the stream. Because, I mean, it don't make sense to have two streams running. So I apologize, man. I got to contact YouTube because this shit keeps happening. But um, any tech gurus, email me if you know of some problem or something. I know it's not my internet because, again, when I search the internet, when I download things, when I'm on Instagram Live from the internet, I've done Facebook Live, it's never an issue but every time on youtube it's been doing this recently so i think they're doing some kind of upgrades and it's fucking shit up and the reason why it looks like my streams are fucked up more is because other people who are streaming a lot of them don't stream from their their mobile device or tablet they're streaming from a computer which is a different setup or they don't stream as often or as long as me so they're not experiencing these crashes but fuck it. Ego, who you got in Darrell versus Uskategi part two? Uh, I'm going to pick Darrell. I was at the Virgil Hunter gym. I watched him spar, and he sparred against notable names. He was doing his thing. But, you know, what happens is in the gym stays in the gym. Unless you got, you know what I mean, some permission to delete the information. But Darrell was looking sharp. Um, and I think, aside from that, the first fight, he started to pull away. You know what I mean? It was Kataki did good in the first two rounds. I had him winning, I think, the first two rounds. But then uh, Darrell got to his boxing shit and he was making adjustments. And then I think in turn, that's what kind of created the, the late hit. He, he seen an opportunity to hit him late and he took it, you know what I'm saying? But he was, to me, it, it was created because he got frustrated. He got frustrated because he wasn't being able to hit him as clean and shit. And the, the fight was slipping away from what it was in the first couple of rounds and you know what i mean the bell rang and all that shit happened so let's that's what i think why are you not in new york because i'm in california someone said why are you not in new york why are you not in new york um let's get it man Make sure y'all smash the like button as you come in. What up? Go hit the like button. Shooter in the building. DJ Yo2. He's in the bay. Yep. Listen, some of you guys don't understand. Like, traveling, traveling is one of the types of things where no matter how you do it, no matter how often you do it, it still can be an exhausting process. You know what I'm saying? Because, like, not even the try. I, I enjoy myself on fight weeks and covering the fights and shit like that, but it's a lot. You know what I mean? Going to rush to hotels and 
shitty Wi-Fi and New York snowing right now. Um, being in the airport, like, you know what I'm saying? So, I sat this one up. Jet lag, coming from Cali, three hour time zone difference. You know what I'm saying? And it's been, it actually, cause the boxing at, at the fourth quarter kind of slowed down and the beginning of the year kind of slowed down. So it was just, um, I haven't covered a fight in a minute. So, you know what I mean? Gotta build up to want to do all that, pack and all that. Uh, so, Eagle Army Gang Gang Notification Gang, hit that like button on money on top of boxing. You know that, the truth only. I'm glad that Darrell has Hunter in his corner this time. Darrell should take it. Yeah, the other thing that's good with that partnership, I'm glad you mentioned that, is because Darrell, to me, I've seen him fight. I've seen him fight. Um, he'd fight off of motion. Maybe even in the James DeGale fight. Both of them. Anthony and and um, Andre. Like, Anthony Darrell was all hyped up versus Badu Jack, and then he lost that fight. You know what I mean? But at the weigh-in, I think he was, like, pushing and shoving and shit. So the Darrell brothers, they're from a rough part, Flint, Michigan. And that's why that's why it's wise to have a person like Virgil Hunter. Do you, do you, put it this way. When do you ever see Virgil Hunter? All the times I've been around him, near him, in his gym, when do you ever see Virgil Hunter? Even Virgil Hunter is like a sneaky assassin. Like, no matter what, he never really is like super angry and screaming. And like, you know what I'm saying? Like, you look at it like an Angel Garcia. He be yelling and shit. Like, when do you ever see Virgil Hunter at any moment like lose his cool? Do you you get what I'm saying? Like, Angel Garcia be like. I speak the truth. Take that motherfucker, Janet Jackson, head off, Zab, Zab. You know what I'm saying? Yelling at Amir Khan. We gonna rap a turban around you. I speak the truth. Oh, they American when they get that welfare check. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, Angel be screaming. Ruben be screaming. My son, Robert. He's here. I'm here. Robert is ready. I am ready. You guys like this guy? Woman beater, baby. Like, shit. Baby nuts. He beat up his wife in front of his kid. You guys like this guy? What, like, when you ever see Virgil do that? Ever. When have you ever seen him? And, and uh, Ruben Guerrero's from the Bay. Virgil Hunter's from the Bay. When, did, when have you ever seen Virgil Hunter lose his cool? That man is composed in the motherfucker like you know what i'm saying he was di like virgil hunter is so like strategic that the motherfucker could be dissing you and it doesn't even sound like a diss because of the way he, he's so calm and in saying it you know what i mean shout out to the super chat we got a ten dollar super chat on gang gang shmoney gang but virgil hunter he can like i said he can diss you and he won't even realize it he'd be like now you know andre he like big cat Andre in the wild, you tell him to do something, and Andre going to do it, but the ward is just built like that. And, you know what I'm saying? And then he'll start talking about Kovalev. Now, occasionally, you, you get a bird in your ear, and the bird tell you Kovalev drinking the vodka. He drinking vodka, and he don't even know how to hold his liquor. He be throwing up. And, and, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Virgil be he be roasting the fuck out of you, but he be like smooth. And, and he was at the press conference, like you know, wiping sweat, and j but really just going in on Kovalev. And I don't know how they do it in Russia, but in America, he drinking all the vodka. He drinking vodka before the fight. Man, Virgil, he's a silent assassin. He talking about Kovalev drinking vodka. <laughs> now, I know Andre, he just, he a gym rat, the way he train, the way his mental focus, and the mental dexterity, but Kovalev, he train off the vodka, he sipping absolute before he train in the vodka, <laughs> like, <laughs> oh my god, Virgil be like, this shit is so funny, Virgil be just like, roasted you but it, it doesn't sound like you know what i mean not everyone gets all rah 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 like Kovalev. 
You see the real the re, the real reason he's acting like a big baby right now is just because he he needs some more vodka. He needs a nightcap of the vodka. You know, like true alcoholic, a true alcoholic, they start having withdrawals and they don't get the vodka. <laughs> Oh my God, Virgil Hunter is hilarious right now. <laughs> you, like, how you diss somebody, but you like that's that's what I'm saying. I'm more, I'm more concerned. Listen, just listen to me. Just hear me out. I'm more concerned with the the quiet killers, the people like Errol Spence, um, the people like Terrence Crawford, the people like Virgil Hunter. That's scary. Like, don't get me wrong. You, you're gonna get some boastful, like Floyd Mayweather's, Deontay Wilder's, which you would be, you know, what I mean, you'd be fearful of Wilder or something if shit went down. But I would say more often than not, nine times out of ten, I'd be more concerned with the the motherfucker who's has beef or has an issue with me. Like, if I went to a bar and then I was about to get in a fight and this dude was just like, shout out to Oak Park, man, my backyard, Sacramento, nine one six. I see you. Um, Hypothetically, greetings, ego. Shout out to you after three. I see you. If I went to a bar and I'm about to get in a fight with a guy and he's just like, rah, 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 fuck you. Like, take it outside, fuck you. Beat up his wife in front of his kid. Like, you know what I mean? I wouldn't be as afraid of that as I would if somebody was like hella quiet and meek and they're like, like Virgil Hunter. Like, I know you. You're really saying this because you're off the mic, but we can take it out. So I'd be like, what the fuck? Like, if especially if I'm all amped up and I'm all turned, like, yeah, come outside, come on. You don't want to fight me? Ah. And then he's all calm about this shit. That's the motherfucker you got to watch out for. In my, From my experience, them them silent but dead, like a fart, silent but deadly. I you know, mean, them quiet motherfuckers. Those are the ones. See, a great example. Someone said Jay Prince type shit. Every single time I've been around Jay Prince, he... He don't even, like, I did an interview, and then don't kill me or anything, Jay Prince, but I did an interview with Jay Prince, and he was just looking around, like, he was just like, yeah, you know, Kovalev, like, he wasn't even, like, he was just chilling, you know what I'm saying? He was just chilling, like, he don't, but ask anybody, ask anybody from Fifth Ward, anybody from Vegas, you know what I'm saying? Like, I heard some stories, like, ask anybody, who Jay Prince is and if he's the one that you should try. Who you finna try? Who you finna try? Uh, like, right? That's how Virgil Hunter is. It's just like, remember when Virgil Hunter was beefing with Keith Thurman? Keith Thurman said, Keith Thurman has said something to him in the interview. I forgot what he said. But Keith Thurman said something like, I don't know if he was trying to get at Amir Khan, but then somehow he brought up Virgil Hunter and he said something like, Virgil Hunter could get this work too. I'm one. See, and this is, listen, I'm not trying to get too sidetracked. This is the type of stuff that I'm talking about where Virgil Hunter's like 6'3". And this is the demeanor Keith Thurman once had that people remember him for. You're getting at the trainer to beef with Amir Khan or whatever. And that's why when people are saying like, oh, Keith Thurman is not acting the same. Is because he used to do stuff like this. He was beefing with a trainer. He better not duck me, thun. I'll come to Brooklyn right now. Don't, don't duck me, thun. You know what I mean? Running up, pulling up on people. And now he's like, 2018, not going to happen, baby. But anyway, back to Virgil Hunter. For whatever reason, Keith Thurman and him were beefing in the media. Go just Google it. And the Keith Thurman said something like, I'll knock out Khan and Virgil Hunter or something crazy. And Virgil Hunter's his response was that quiet killer shit. He was just like, man, if y'all don't believe me, Google this shit. Virgil Hunter replied to Keith Thurman and it was just like, like I said, he's so smooth. You you don't even know if he's dissing you or like, was that a death threat? Like motherfucker? Virgil Hunter says something like, I read a lot of books and Sun Tzu and the Art of War and I, I know in the martial arts, there's different ways to kill a man. And Keith Thurman, I grab him by the ponytail and really wear him out. If he, I'm like, what the fuck? Like, he just said it so, like, nonchalant and start. And see, Virgil Hunter is going to, um, 
bring up like just different shit that'll really scare you like history that's fucking scary like if you're trying to fight someone in 2018 right and they start bringing up hit now during the shang dynasty like what the fuck shang dynasty did this motherfucker say shang dynasty oh hell no i'm trying to fight you in 2018 you bringing up the shang dynasty he, he must know something that i don't know in, in the shang dynasty when the chinese emperor was about to get him and tell keith thurman there's more than one way to skin the cat and i hit him grab him by the ponytail and really <laughs> what hey virgil b you gotta watch for the quiet ones i'm trying to tell you virgil reminds me of samuel jackson nah that just goes completely against what i just said samuel jackson be yelling all right motherfucker virgil's not like that if anything virgil's like terrence howard <laughs> what kind of what the different in a dog man like what, what did he say in hustle and flow he said, man, different than a dog, man. Like, if anything, he sounded like Terrence, Terrence Howard. What was that movie with the Tuskegee Airmen, the black pilot? Sir, we got the black pilots and people are dying. What's up with it, Iron Man, man? <laughs> I was just playing with you, young blood, man. <laughs> oh, what's up with it, hustle and flow, man? Red Tails, shout out to y'all, yeah. Yeah, but Virgil don't be playing. Yeah, Virgil be like, I, I don't know what, like, like I said, if motherfuckers start talking about history lessons and shit, you see Caesar in the Roman Empire, he, everybody respected him, but Brutus, Brutus had other intentions. Like, oh shit, he talking about Caesar? See Caesar, see Brutus? See Mont, see Malcolm, see success in his out. Mm. <laughs> so I said Virgil talk like a murderer. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. Like I don't, I'm not. Listen, I don't. All the, it's just like the internet trolls. All the people. You know how many people? Oh, I'm gonna fucking knock you out and da da da. But I be at the fight. I'm a I'm a vlogger. I'm not hard to find. Like I said, I don't go to the city to city looking for problems, but that's that internet shit. Oh, the fucking, you fucking ego, you block me. I will knock you out when I see you. Like, that's that. You gotta watch out for them quiet ones, the ones that don't say nothing, just like, and then just sneak you or some shit. Oh, shit. Ugh. Wilder finna get KO tonight. Charlie Z follows me. I, mean, I don't got no issue with Charlie Z. He follows me on Twitter. Shout out to Zelenoff. Um, the vampire stream the other night was funny. We be we. What did they say? We be we. What the fuck was it? Do we do we? What was he saying? The we be the we shit. What the fuck was he? Oh my god. Somebody tell me from the vampire stream what that dude was saying. We be the we. I forgot how to say it. WWE. We be the we. Like the fuck you talking about? Ween boy. Ween boy. Fuck you mean. We be the we. Don't make me pull the video up again. Um. We be the we. Oh, hello. He's like your channel sucks. We be the we. My wee bit of wee, I, I'm not talking like that. At least people know what the fuck I'm saying. Wee bit of wee. Uh, yeah, I got it, man. I might have to pull it up just to see. Because I don't even remember how he said it. I got to go watch the vampire stream again. That wee, wee bit of wee. Doobie doobie. Man, you keep killing this dude. See, but they always come for me. Like, uh, like I got 113,000 plus subscribers. I don't possibly know everybody that follows me. And I never just look at people and be like, ooh, wee wee and just start going in on them. But if you come for me, then come correct. Roast me or try to. Make sure that shit's funny. Because you might only have one shot, one opportunity. Would you capture it? Like Eminem said, wee 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 like, don't come to me with no weeby the wee shit. How's your speaking voice sound like a, a DJ 
scratching. Like, motherfucker, you sound like a, a vinyl right now. Weeby do wee shit. And got the audacity to talk about my channel. And you beg, who begs for subscribers in the title? Please gain subscribers. Watch the video. And then you had zero likes. And then I disliked all your, we be the we, I disliked all your shit. WWE, we be the we. Man, I'm telling you that the English humor is different. Some of y'all motherfuckers is funny, I'm sure, but some of y'all ain't funny. We be the we. Fuck out of here. Like I said, I don't I never come for these dudes. I never go out of my way, but you blocked me after I failed a question in the hot seat. Well, actually one of my shooters blocked you, but that's what that's part of the game, you know what I'm saying? Like that's why you have to if you get in the hot seat, you gotta weave it to we you gotta weave it to win. <laughs> Hold on, let me Oh my gosh, this shit is so funny. Watch who y'all send for me. I'm, no, I'm trying to tell you. Listen to how he's. WWE fans. <laughs> Welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to my the channel. My name is Mr. WWE. WWE. Welcome back to the channel. Like with the. WWE fans, what? You remember, he's had like a cassette tape being fed. Do what? Wibby the wee. We be the we. Welcome back to the channel. Hold on. WWE fans, welcome back to the WWE. WWE fans. Hey. WWE fans. WWE fans. WWE fans. WWE fans. If your Metro don't trust you, I'ma shoot you. Hey, that's the remake. If your Metro don't touch you, I'ma shoot you. If your Metro don't touch you, I'ma shoot you. My name is Mr. News 89. My name is Mr. Hey. Metro booming on if your metro don't touch it, I'm a to be the fan, to be the be 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 to be the be to be the to to be the to be the be to be the 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 to be 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 this that listen to you want it you want it you want it you want it hold on let me get to it you want 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 it my name is Mr. News 89. My bringing name. You the best news on YouTube for WWE. Roman Reigns to Facebook. I'm bringing you the best news on YouTube for WWE. Yeah, I'm bringing you the. He said, "I'm bringing you the best news on YouTube." Okay, you're bringing us the very best YouTube news or whatever, and you got zero likes and three dislikes, and one was from me. So how are you the best at any? <laughs> you owe for three. Like Eminem said, better shut your fucking mouth while you owe for two. Back in 94, limp open the show for you. Rock the crowd better and stole, he said, stole the whole show from you. Took your motherfucking DJ and stole him too. So you fall in the slump and get all emotional. Now he sings and whips rings and, oh my God. Confused as fuck, cause now his music sucks dick. Mr. Mr. Ass Kisser to get accepted and rap quicker, but never last and never last is a quitter. And you bitter cause I came along. Hey, Eminem was busting on that channel, on that track. Hold on. He said, What better shut your fucking mouth while you owe for two? Back in 94, limp open the show for you. Rock the crowd better and stole the whole show from you. Took your motherfucking DJ and sold him too. Um, uh, hold on. Y'all got me WWE. WWE. Someone said we got a super chat. We got a WWE super chat. out to Keith Murray. Def Squad. $5 super chat. Love from the Shot Town. See? We good everywhere. Ego Army Man. Please believe it, WWE. The best news on YouTube. Like, that shit is not called YouTube. There's no CH in YouTube. 
YouTube, WWE. I'm the best news on YouTube. And like, you're not no. Wait, what platform is that? Where's YouTube? There ain't no fucking YouTube, motherfucker. Why y'all got me going in on this bum? YouTube. <laughs> but that that's the ones that talk the bullshit. Your channel sucks. Sucks fucking dick. You fucking... You chats bollocks. Like... Come on, man. I don't even get like I lived in England, but it was maybe because it was so long ago or whatever. I don't even understand like some of the UK British disses. Like you chats bollocks, man. YouTube, all you guys on YouTube's chats bollocks. Like a chats bollock? What are you talking about? You're nothing but a shit house, really. Like, oh, I'm a shit house. What the fuck is a shit house? Fucking YouTube, you <laughs> YouTube. <laughs> what you think, man? Hey, man. Hey man, what you f <laughs> Oh my god. Hey man, what you think? <laughs> what you think, man? You chats about you chats bollocks. YouTube. YouTube. That's what <laughs> You're nothing but you're nothing but a shit house really. You're like, okay, I'm a shit house. That's what's up. I'm a porta potty. That's pretty dope. Who's London Tay, man? He's a shit house. Get this shit out. Man, stop bringing these shit houses to me, man. These fucking wanks. They, they, they chats bollocks. Man's not hot. Where in UK did you live? England. Stop begging. Oh, now he mad because he got London in his name. Where in England did you live? I live. I lived in Suffolk, mate. I lived about 45 minutes an hour from London on the military base. Shout out to Lake and Heath. I told you my dad was in the military. Is that not good enough, you, you bloody wank? Huh? Mate? Am I ch chatting bollocks, your shit house? He mad as fuck. Your name is London, so you're probably from... Yeah, I'm, I'm from Brixton. You, you're fucking chat shit, man. Hey, man. You chat shit, man. Man's not hot. <laughs> You mad? Oh, they mad, man. They mad, right? <laughs> you fucking bloody wank. Man. You yanks are all the same. You chat shit, chat shit, get bang. Chat shit, get bang. Y'all be loving that chat shit, get bang shit, too. Chat shit, get bang. Where's London take? Chat shit, get bang, London. Where you at? Man's not hot. He is not roasting the entire UK. Oh, now, oh wow, they're trying to say I'm a, I'm against the UK. No, we stay sucker free no matter where you're from. You could be from Mexico, you could be from America, you could be from the UK. I got love all over. I'm not dissing the UK. See, this is this is like some Tupac Biggie shit. Like the the me and Biggie situation is smaller than that. You know what I'm saying? See, everybody want to open their mouth with a motherfucking opinion. I don't have shit to do with the UK. I didn't say anything about the UK. There's some great talent in the UK. I'm talking about you, London Taylor, and fellow British London people that act like you. I don't say I didn't say nothing about the UK. I just said man's not hot. Chat shit get bang. I'm just saying y'all slang that y'all say to me when y'all disrespect me. Chat shit get bang. Get ready for the hot seat, baby. Is he still talking? See, this is what they try to, this is what haters do. They try to, you try to turn the UK against me. Oh, ego sin, this and this about that. I didn't say this, about, I didn't say this and this about you, UK. I said this is this about you. Just take the K out of it. I said this about you. We were talking about you. I didn't say the UK, I say you. And it don't matter, we stay sucker free no matter where you from. So chat shit get bang. And then he said unblock his other account. Why would I unblock your other account when you're about to get this account or block? That's what I'm saying. Just a bunch of lame dude. Hey, uh, hey, I'm talking more shit, but unblock my other account. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. 
That's like, that's like sleeping with a girl that burned you and gave you an STD, and she got a new STD talking about sleep with me again. Fuck you mean, that don't even make sense. I gave you syphilis the first time, I got herpes now, sleep with me again. So, I blocked your other account, or whoever, whoever blocked your account, and now you're talking shit on this new account. See, who even has the time to have multiple accounts? Yes, King Corleone. Oh, hold on, hold on, hold on. They said, y'all want him in here still? You started talking shit about the UK first. No, I didn't talk shit about the UK. Listen, my dude is in the UK. You ain't seen the Kell Brook videos that we, that we just had on the channel? Shout out to RTD. That's my dude from the UK. I used to live in the UK. I learned a lot from the UK. I got nothing but love for the UK. Like I said, take the K out of it. I'm talking to you and other people that are lame like you. I'm talking about people who come for me, right? You, K, get it? You, I'm talking to you, K, get it? I'm not saying the UK, I'm saying you, okay. So that's the difference. You started talking about the, what did I say about, what did I say about the UK? I just started dissing Manchester. No, I said men's not high. I say shit about Manchester. I didn't say shit about London, right? I didn't say North Ireland or whatever. It's still a part of the UK. Like I didn't say none of that. I'm talking about you. Man's not hot. Oh my gosh. You was making fun of our accents before I started. Stop backpedaling. Do y'all can we can we get rid of this London dude? I make fun of make fun of a ton of accents. I do I just did Virgil Hunter. You didn't say shit about me making fun of Virgil Hunter's accent or his voice. Now did you? You know what I'm saying? I'd be like, oh, Pacquiao, do, 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 do. You know what I'm saying? You didn't say nothing when I said something about Pacquiao. When I do Floyd Mayweather, when I do Adrian Broner. You know what I'm saying? Stop it. Stop it, stop it, stop it. See, when you're consistent in what you do, you know what I mean? When you're consistent, then you don't have to worry about it. I do, fantastico. I was born. So if someone's mad because I did Canelo and I did what Chavez Jr. said, oh, Ego said this about Mexico. I'm not able saying, I'm not saying nothing disrespecting a whole community or culture. And, and y'all know that, you know what I mean? But see, people always try to make it out to be something. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, no problem. I just did Virgil Hunter for 10 minutes straight. And Ruben Guerrero. You guys like this guy? Baby nuts? Beat up his wife. You, you didn't have a problem with that, but when I start saying YouTube and shit house, you had a problem with it. Shut up. Shut up. Hey ego, can you do Miguel Cotto? Um, I don't know. Probably. I think I've done Cotto before. Cotto just be talking in third person. Uh, me Miguel Cotto. He he dreamed to fight in Janky Stadium. Like. Did you just say Miguel Cotto and you are Miguel Cotto? Like, Miguel Cotto is a G for talking in third person. Uh, Miguel Cotto, he in New York to fight against in the janky stadium. Like, what motherfucker were you whispering for? <laughs> you know, HBO get mad as fuck. Can we turn up the levels? He's several decibels lower than we can't hear him. I couldn't hear what you said, Koda. I said, uh, me and Koda. Like, did you say me and Koda? Like, y'all different people? That's the funny thing about Koda. He be talking to third person. Uh, this June, Miguel Koda will face Kamaga. Like, wait, wait, wait. You are Miguel Koda. You say Miguel Koda will face Kamaga. But you, he is him and I am him. You are Koda. Miguel Cotto took a loss to Saddam Ali. Oh man, can y'all diss me? Like, listen, I want you guys to be successful. Can you diss me with some authority? Like something that's funny? Those corner store shades are clean. Shout out to you, John Dejan. You tried. Good job. I don't give a fuck about, I'm not Floyd Mayweather. 
So yeah, okay, I got corner store, liquor store glasses. Great. Those corner store glasses are clean. Like, okay. These super chats is clean. This ego army is clean. The hot seat is clean. That's what is clean. Um, your ears look a tad small. Once again, men monitoring other men. This is what it's come to. Everybody just type Caitlyn. This is what we're dealing with in 2018. Just a bunch of uh, Caitlyn's. We got a bunch of Caitlyn's. Your ears are too small. I like my men with bigger ears. Like, ill. Everybody just type Caitlyn. Ego, do Broner. Ah, oh, man, you know. AB, Algebra Books. Anchovies, bitch. That the bitch. She 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 said at the mall. I grabbed her booty. About booty. I ain't touch her. Like. <laughs> Damn, you motherfuckers trying to get me on that that ego Sanchez, Abel Sanchez shit. Someone said, do a Mexican accent. Like, <laughs> trying to set me up for the okie doke. Do a Mexican. You gotta say specifics, motherfucker. He said, "Do a Mexican accent." Like I'm just gonna start <laughs> doing some stereotypical Mexican accent. But, um, do Mike Tyson? Uh, I don't know. Tyson just be saying whatever comes to his mind in his prime. I'm I'm I'm, I'm ecstatic though. <laughs> hey, I felt I'm gonna be real. I felt bad for Tyson. When he was talking about cussing, he was crying, and he was like choked up, and he was like, I knew, he said, I knew from that point on that nobody could fuck with me because of what Cuth told me. And then Cuth, Cuth, he died, after he died, he was like, I knew nobody could fuck with me because I was fucking killed. <laughs> that man was tripping on that. Like, he was like really choked up about, I would, I would fucking kill him. Tyson was saying some, in his, like, in the prime trash talk, he was saying some really suspect shit. But the thing about Tyson is, even though the shit was sus, you couldn't do nothing. Because if you, if you call him a name, he's going to fuck you up. So you're kind of, like, stuck with the, you, you have to let him get that out. Like, you can't, well, you going to stop Tyson. You know what I mean? He was like, what he, who is he, Razor Ruddock? Who is he fighting? And they were like, he said, how dare you speak to me like that? He said, you should kneel before me. Like, who the fuck are you? You the king of royal England? And she said, how dare you speak to me? <laughs> hey, Tyson is a fucking fool. That motherfucker said, he said, how dare you speak to me like that? You should bow down. You should kneel before me. Like, that shit sound like something on, like, Star Trek. You know what I'm saying? Like, when Captain Kirk and Spock get captured by the whoever, whoever the enemy is and shit. He said, how... How dare you speak to me like that? You should kneel, you should bow down. Like West Side Connection, bow down. How dare you speak like that? He said, kneel before me. I wish a motherfucker would tell <laughs> Oh my God. I wish a, another grown man would tell me to bow down and kneel before him. Like, hey, Tyson is tripping. Like, you've been watching too many movies or something because who talks like behold like who says behold and shit like that behold <laughs> i'm the king of the castle kneel before me was the <laughs> resistance is futile it's futile however you say it. i don't know how to say this shit. You know? i don't know what the fuck i just be using big words sometimes sometimes i don't know i'll I be i'll be ecstatic i'm 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 so ecstatic the motherfucker said kneel before me or some shit. That was hilarious to me. How dare you speak to me? He said, How dare you speak to me like that? You should all you should bow down. You should be grateful. You should kneel before me. Bow down. What's thy connection? I broke my back. It's final. Like what are you even talking about? And he's like, he said, after the fight, I'm uh, I'm uh, after the fight, I'ma make you kiss me with them big lips. Like, ill. What? That man said, "It's ludicrous. It's ludicrous. I'm not. I'm not talking about the rapper. I'm not talking about him from disturbing the beat. I'm just saying it's absolutely ludicrous. You should kiss me with them big ass lips. 
Like, I would never tell a man he should kiss me. What if, I, what if a motherfucker did it? Oh, you told me to kiss you. Like, no. But again, that's Tyson. What you gonna do? <laughs> that motherfucker said, you should bow down, kneel before me. Surrender now. Resistance is futile. Yeah, man said <laughs> at that press conference, come and say it to my face, you punk ass white boy. He said, I'm gonna fuck you in the ass in front of everybody. know about that one time. like what if you was Tyson's boy like you know what I'm saying you grew up in Brownsville Brooklyn or something and then Tyson was your boy and your man said that like you just like come and come and say that to my face you punk ass white boy kneel before me suck, suck on my Peter like like what, what if you was really like honestly if you was Tyson's man's right and he would start saying that I'm gonna fuck you in, in, in your butthole in front of everybody, like he's just talking crazy. I'm gonna rip, <laughs> I'm gonna rip your asshole to, th to threads. Like, did you say threads or shreds? Either way, it's gay. But I just want to know what <laughs> I said. I'm gonna, I'm gonna rip your butthole to threads, prison style. How dare you speak to me? Like, what if that was your boy and he was just really going in on another dude like that? I'm gonna fuck you. I'm gonna fuck you in front of every. Like, damn, you just gonna have. Like witnesses to the rape, like this is crazy what Tyson was was doing. And then I remember <laughs> Tyson's a fool. I remember somebody uh, asked him a question. He said, he said, I don't know. I'm just a regular person. I I, I make mistakes. I fuck up. And then someone asked him a question. He said, mind your business, you punk ass white boy. <laughs> I was, he said something crazy like mind your business. Oh my gosh. Tyson was like. He wanted to be feared, I think. So he just, that's the way to fear. If you want to fear, if you want another man to fear you, bring up you sodomizing him or raping him. They will fear you. Because, like, imagine going to a bar and you down to brawl, you down to scrap one-on-one. -on -one, and then the dude said, if I win, I'm going I'm to fuck you in the ass in front of everybody, in front of all these bar patrons. I wouldn't fight the dude. Point blank. Point. I am not going to fight you. If, if, if we we're about to fight and I was down for the fight, but then you said that, because the implications, there's, if you lose, you're getting fucked by another man. Like, I'm, I, I can't do it because I don't want to, it's not that I'm not confident in my ability. This motherfucker got a 20 inch neck. He might beat me and then I get raped. Hell no. Nah. I'd be like, you win, dog. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm, I was tripping. I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to catch this Uber and go home. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Like, I'm not going to stick around to see what happened. Yeah, okay, you want to step outside? I'll, I'll step outside, but after, if I, if I beat you, if I win, I'm, I'm the victor. You know, Tyson be throwing the words out. If I'm the victor, it's my victory. I'm going to fuck you in the ass in front of everybody. I'm, I'm going to call that, that Uber right now. Like, I'm, I'm going to go home with my, my boy. What are you going to say to your, your girl? Like, why are you limping? <laughs> Why are you walking like that? Your girl like, what's wrong? What's wrong, Steve? Why are you walking like that? Oh, you know, uh, I got to fight with Mike Tyson. He fucked me in the ass front of everybody. Like, no. That is not no some shit you could put on a, a, a Facebook post. <laughs> yeah, today I ran into Mike Tyson. We got in a fight and he fucked me in the ass in front of everybody. I'm like, no, I'm, I'm not the one. Fuck you, me. Just let me stop because a lot of people, 2018, y'all some squares. You know what I mean? And then ego, he's he's just promoting the LGBT agenda and he he's making fun of homosexuals. Like it's these are jokes, motherfucker. I'm not making fun of gay people. That's cool. Do your thing, gays. Like I don't I don't care what you do. You know what I'm saying? People people take a dick, but they can't take a joke. Fuck you, me. Like stop. I don't have no problem with nobody, but I'm just making jokes. What Tyson was saying was out of pocket. That's 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 all I'm trying to say. And I'm not fighting Tyson. I'm not fighting no man that say you're going to... The consequence of me losing and his victory is me getting raped. Like, that, is, that instantly you win. It's an automatic L for me. And it's an automatic, it's an automatic loss on my record. Period. Because, like I said, it's just... It's too much riding on it. Like, it'd be one... Like... Deontay Wilder and Ortiz, let's say they make a bet 
a wager. Oh, if I beat you, you owe me a hundred thousand. Cool. I mean, they're both making good money. But if I lose to Mike Tyson or whoever, right, and they're doing this to me, then you take my manhood. You you push my shit in. You, simple question, eh? You ever had your shit pushed in? No, I ever had my shit pushed in big time, bro. <laughs> that motherfucker on trading day was real. Listen, and I'm not trying. I'm gonna stop talking about rapes in in a second. <laughs> Just so you uh, change your name to Rape and Ego. Like, <laughs> don't tell people that my, this was my channel is about rape. But that dude on Training Day, let me just tell you, whoever the fuck he was, I think he was in Blood and Blood Out to be in the 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 clique of the Mexican gang or whatever. He deserved an Oscar because that was the most compelling prison ex-convict who's been released seen I've ever he said simple the other dude's like simple question eh you had your shit pushed in and he's like I've had my shit pushed in big time bro <laughs> like what he was like how are you how are you pushed in big time bro like how are you proud of this That shit was crazy. He's, he had, remember Jim Carrey do all them Viracosa and all that? He had them veins in his dick. Push, dead, big time, bro. Like, <laughs> like, dog. <laughs> like, you really enjoyed this. Like, hell no. Nah. Oh my god. <laughs> Push. Like, are you getting your shit pushed in right now, motherfucker? Having <laughs> my shit pushed in big time, bro. Like, motherfucker, you're getting your shit pushed in right now to be doing all that. This is made by day. Push. In big time. Like, hell to the dog. You ever heard that song? Hell no. Hell, hell no. That dude say, man. <laughs> or that scene on Blood In, Blood Out where Miklo is in jail. And that dude is like, come here, little bitch. Give me some John John. Ew. <laughs> that man said, he had a stick. No, what are you doing? Get away from me, he said. <laughs> hey, remind me never go to prison. They be like, yeah, you that funny boy fucking from the box of the ego videos. Uh, I'm doing 25 to life, so give me some charge. Like, I can't be in prison. Like Pac said, he said, prison ain't the spot. Like, I can't be in prison. That man said, he said, come here, you fucking bitch. Give me some chon chon. Like, I'll be afraid. Motherfucker said chon chon. He said, give me them cheeks. Anyway. <sighs> yeah. <laughs> I miss. Do y'all who's seen Training Day? So I don't just look like a fool. Push that bitch. Like that man. I hope you guys have seen the movie because I'm doing all these movie scenes and shit for no one to have seen it. That's a little bit embarrassing. People telling my mom, "Hey Deb, I, I seen your son. He said he had his shit pushed in." <laughs> like hell no. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. See, everybody wanna like be us. Half these motherfuckers can't see us. We have fun on this shit. Ego do a dope Denzel. <laughs> Alright. Okay. Denzel's just smooth with his shit. Yeah, okay. I've been planning this all week, huh? I wish you had more time. That was Tuco from Breaking Bad. See, I never got into into the Breaking Bad series. I heard it's dope though. See, look. See, you can tell. Look at the emotion. 
push. I did this. Look, he having his shit pushed in right now. Look. That's crazy. He should have, you gotta stop drinking. You gotta stay off that, that bottle. He was tripping. Look at that, look at the neck shit. What, what is this? What the fuck is this? He was tripping. And like the thing that made it worse is because he was like animated with it. I've had my shit. He like, he started uh, like lifting up off the, like he's like stood up. Like he was really just happy off of getting pushed. He's like, I've had my shit pushed in. Big time, bro. <laughs> like, <laughs> I got drool on my room. Hold on. <laughs> oh my gosh, this shit is funny. Someone said gay talk. Gay talk. Okay. Hold on. <laughs> I got dribble and shit like a baby. Hold on. Oh, I don't give a fuck. I hope you guys know that by now. I really don't. I don't give a fuck. Don't give this guy media credentials. He he's spitting and dribble and he got his shit pushed in apparently. I run boxing. Anyway, uh, we got a super chat from Chris Reed. Five dollar super chat. He ain't never had his shit pushed in. Shout out to all the real motherfuckers never had his shit pushed in. I think Deontay Wilder by decision likes to burn first fight. I'm scared because he throws his hand straight up. Who benefit? Uh, throws throws a hand straight up, and who benefit? Charlo better, Triple G, Canelo Jacobs. Very good questions. Damn that shit pushed in. I'm all <laughs> like a workout or shit. Getting your shit pushed in. <laughs> um, like I said, it's it's a scary fight for both guys. Like if if you're rocking, if you're really pulling for Wilder, really pulling for Luis Ortiz, then you know what I mean? Anything can happen with that type of style. It's a perfect stylistic fight, I will say that. Wilder, some people are going to say he's sloppier or not as fundamental, but he has he has very good athletic attributes, very good movement, very strong piston jab, and he has that killer power in both hands. See, people sleep on Wilder's left hand. Left hand will get you rocked up quick, and he might finish you off with the right. You know what I mean? But Luis Ortiz, fundamentally sound, Cuban background, always feel like he's the boogeyman, never getting an opportunity. So it's a huge opportunity. And not only for him, it's also a huge opportunity for Cuba. Like, right? If he becomes a heavyweight champion, he'll be the first Cubano, Cuban. Mira, mira. You know, he'll be the first Cuban. He live in Miami. And he'll be the first Cuban to become a, a heavyweight champion. So either way, it's, it's a lot of implications for this fight. Um, Tough fight, tough fight. But like I said, it, I'm, mark my words. Mark my fucking words. If Wilder go out there and bomb out Luis Ortiz and it looks like very little resistance, I'm not trying to hear, oh, but Ortiz was 68. Fucking 68. I'm like, no. Ain't no fucking 68. If he make it look easy, this dude is scary. Because he has, like I said, Wilder, when has Wilder not been the smaller guy? Not necessarily in terms of height, but weight-wise. Because everyone keeps bringing up weight. When, when, do you, what heavyweight do you know is knocking motherfuckers out weighing 214 the day before the fight? You know what I'm saying? All these other dudes that are knockout artists are are big, like big boys, and they're weighing like 230, high 230s, 240s, 250s even, maybe even higher than that. You know what I'm saying? Name a person who's fluctuating from uh, low or from 214 to maybe low 230s that's decapitating dudes. When has Wilder ever outweighed somebody? You know what I'm saying? So you know it's God-given power. He don't need all this extra weight. That's what I'm saying. People don't really watch boxing like that. They be, oh, but he only weighs 214. Okay, let's say you weigh 190 and he only weighs 214. That's not that much. That's not, you know what I mean, not, not too far away. You fight him. And tell me how that goes. Record it for me. And then you're going to hear a motherfucker, before you're unconscious, you're going to hear a motherfucker's like, world star. So, you know what I mean? I don't get gassed by that. But either way, it's a good fight. 
Um, Daniel Jacobs, obviously, he said what benefits him more? Canelo. Canelo is the biggest name in the division. So if Canelo wins against Triple G and then Jacobs gets that, then that's the biggest fight for him. Next would be Triple G. And I'm talking about, like, I'm putting my promoter hat on or whatever. If Triple G rematch takes off, like, if Jacobs beats uh, Solecki and Triple G retains his title with with uh, Canelo, then that's the next biggest fight because they got history. And then Charlo. And then somewhere down the line is, like, uh, I would say Billy Joe and Charlo are about the same, but maybe you put Billy Joe Saunders above because just because he has a belt. And I'm not talking about fight styles. I'm not talking about what's the best exciting fight. I'm talking about what benefit. The question was which fight benefits Danny Jacobs the most in terms of like most lucrative, biggest fight benefits his resume. So th that's my answer. And then, like I said, Demetrius Andre somewhere. He in, the, he in the back of the bus like Rosa Parks. And I'm not dissing. I'm just saying his whole career in the last couple of years has been riddled with uh, inactivity. Like, he's a definite skill-wise, definite player in the division. But when is the last time that Andre has been, like, linked to actually a big fight and the big fight happened? And I'm not just talking about call-outs. You know what I mean? So that's just, that's just my thoughts on it. But... All those are good fights, man. Middleweight's jumping now. Ortiz with the upset bombs will be deactivated. It's only a couple hours away. 4.42. Made a best man win. Like I said, I'm, I'm looking forward to it. Uh, actually, out of all fight, including Bevo Barrera, Wilder Ortiz. Wilder Ortiz is the the biggest fight. Ego people, Mr. Boxing all day says ego. People making too much of Deontay Wilder weight, but not focusing on the revelation that Luis Ortiz reached only 64, not 84, like they have on Boxrec. Uh, I heard that. I don't know who said that, but some of like someone emailed me or, or inboxed me and said that. Hey, I heard. Luis Ortiz's listed weight is or listed uh, height and reach ain't ain't accurate, but I don't know. I don't know if it's true or not. Either way, Ortiz is a good fighter. <laughs> Showtime killing these boys. Shout out to DC King five dollar su super chat. I heard a heavyweight that sparred with Wilder and Joshua says that that Wilder he think Wilder could KO a cow. Damn. Tonight gonna change a lot of y'all mind. I didn't hear that interview, but I would love to check that out. Maybe I'll just type in those keywords. But yeah, listen, I have an interview with Lenroy Thomas, who just fought in the UK. It didn't end, I'm sure, how he pr preferred because it there's a accidental headbutt or some shit that. Hold on. Accidental headbutt that um, stopped the fight prematurely. I think it was a draw or something. I don't know. Um, but anyway, I got an interview with him, and we was talking. Hold on, I'm sorry. I'm trying to I'm trying to pull it up and talk to y'all at the same time. You know, a little bit of multitasking. One more time for the for the YouTube. WWE fans, welcome back. Oh my God, w, WWE. <clears throat> Listen. WWE. Look, my shit. Front page, my shit. Uh, we be on the front page. <coughs> Boxing Eagle. Tom Porter, High Performance Center. Alex Benz, Winky Wrights, and. Um, I came up with. Keep in mind, he. I mean, you see how big he is, right? He big. During the era of the Winky Wright, Jeff. You know, by far, I give the edge to um to Dante. Look, Those, a lot of guys you named are. So just to recap, you guys can watch the full interview. Where are we at? We almost have 40,000 views on it. Catch the whole interview. But Lenroy Thomas, who again just fought in the UK. Um, he has sparred Alexander Povetkin, Olympic gold medalist, Luis Ortiz, Deontay Wilder, and Anthony Joshua. And listen to my question. You know who asked that real shit? New media. Stand up, Eagles Army, stand up. 
within the top five or champions. I gotta ask you, who hit the hardest out of all? I mean, because they say Joshua has power, Wilder, Ortiz. But um, you know, by far, I give the edge to um to Dante. You know. Really, you said by far, okay. Yes, yes. But you know, I mean. What was it about his power that felt? I mean, like you said, you can't sleep on anybody's power. But what was it about Wilder's that stood out even more? Just something about that right hand. I mean, you know, my job was not to get hit by the right hand, you know what I mean? And every camp I go to, I measure myself to see the level, where I'm at with these top guys. So that was a great experience for me, and he was teaching me a lot, you know what I mean? We, we work, man, we work really good together, you know what I mean? And yeah, yeah. See? For the full interview, check the channel box of Ego. You know what it is, Ego. Are we stand up? So, <clears throat> once again, to recap. See, listen, when I, like, I'm not trying to say I'm above or better, but... When it comes to like new media and all this, like I'm everywhere, you ain't never there. Like I'm not just like giving opinions based on nothing. It's like based on patterns, talking to fighters, both on camera and off camera. Like there's different ingredients. A lot of these motherfuckers on YouTube don't have any type of connection. A lot of the people in the comment section ain't never stepped into any boxing gym, let alone know any fighters. So a lot of what they say is on some fanboyism. Well, oh, fucking Wilder, he's a little chicken, chicken leg, chicken, and Adonis Chickenson, and all this chicken shit, and chicken pot pie, and chicken broth, and chicken chicken, chicken noodles, and all that. That's cool, but nobody. If you go to a respected boxing gym, nobody is really talking like that. And if they are talking like that, they're not getting on camera and willing to say this stupid shit that they, oh, Floyd Mayweather's a pillow-fisted bitch. He sucks. He's he's the he's the ultimate bitch in the sport. Like, all that dumb shit to people on YouTube. That's why them motherfuckers ain't growing. I see it, you know what I mean? All the people, oh, Abel Sanchez, it, what he said is a stereotype, but he's right, motherfucker. Bunch of blacks crying, like, co-sign that shit if you want to. And that's why people ain't growing, but fucking Popeye's chicken, chicken lay, all that chicken, chicken, talking crazy shit. You, all these heavyweights would knock your bitch ass out. Like, so that's, that's one thing. But anyway, this, these are actually people that step in the ring, lace them up, risk their life. And Linroy Thomas, shout out to Jamaica. Hey, man, shout out to Jamaica. Boop, boop, right? Um, he's been in there with Luis Ortiz, been in there with Anthony Joshua, been in there with Povetkin and Wilder. That's a hell of a, hell of a camp. And he was in Wilder's camp for this fight tonight with Luis Ortiz. This interview was done before. He had worked with Wilder previously, but I guess, like he said, the work with Wilder was good. So they brought him in for this camp. I don't know how long he stayed and all that, but he was preparing for a Dave Allen rematch. Wilder was preparing, so they made it happen. But anyway, bottom line is he sparred all these motherfuckers. And this is what he's saying. He's saying Wilder's power. That motherfucker said, by far. He didn't say, oh, I give Wilder slight edge. He said, he says, Wilder power takes it by far. Now, obviously, we live in a power-happy society. HBO, especially, they're the king of this bullshit. Like, oh, if you, if you have power and you slug and you're pushing forward, you're winning. I'm not saying that. I'm not stupid. You have to be able to get your power off. But per capita, multitudes of people... Who have sparred all of these guys and fought all these guys he's not saying one bad thing about anthony joshua or luis ortiz but he's being honest and saying with power versus power by far wilder has the power so again a bunch of motherfuckers who've never sparred any of them let alone eric molina or anybody you know what i mean are telling me no that's bullshit joshua hits way harder Look at the highlight reels. Look at what fighters are saying. And see, this is the thing. I know my boxing. I watch boxing. I cover this sport. Like, so I, try, I tend to see what's going on and different things. Even if I don't make videos about everything, I still see what's going on because this is my job. There's other people like, shout out to my dude, Isaac Chamberlain, right? He sparred Wilder and AJ. He said the same thing. He said, Wilder's not doing all that great wild and crazy shit from the get-go. He does that when he got guys hurt. Pauli Malinaji, another res uh, respected commentator and a fighter. He said the same thing. But it's only the fans in the comment section and YouTube channels and shit 
that are shitting on Wilder when they and most of them, like I said, have no real connections to the game. Like, tell me somebody who's been in there and interviewed people who spar with Wilder and or had conversations, preferably an interview that we can all see, and they're saying the same thing. You know what I mean? I was watching Sugar Shane Mosley lightweight highlights. Oh my god. Yeah, he's one of the greatest lightweights of all time. Him and Roberto Duran. But the, the, Shane Mosley, here's another thing. Shane Mosley did an interview one time and he said Mayweather and Pacquiao hit about the same or Mayweather and Canelo hit about the same. I forgot which one it was. And then you read the comments, fucking Shane, he's full of sugary bullshit. There's no way Mayweather hits as hard as Pacquiao. He, what do you mean he hits as hard as he? Shane Mosley been in the ring with all of them. And he, and he doesn't protect. And if you look at it, from Pacquiao to Canelo to Mayweather, Mayweather was the only one who was really talking shit to him and treating him bad in the build. He's like, it's okay, baby. It's not my fault. He was talking to his daughter. It, it's, it's not my fault. Shane Mosley got a, a fake nose. And he's like, you look like a leprechaun. You got that green suit. You wearing all this green. I'm money made. You ain't making no money. Why you got the green suit? You know what I mean? So if anything, why would he be lying for Floyd when Floyd Mayweather was the one who was talking shit because ain't he had a, he, he missed a potato head. He, he got the fake nose. I'm money made. I'm the one with the money. He got the green suit looking like a leprechaun. Okay. He looked like a leprechaun. Okay. <laughs> that's how Floyd, when Floyd really get in his own, that's how Floyd do it. I'm money made. He easy work. Who you be? Okay. I don't know who you... <laughs> Floyd, I like when Floyd get in his zone. He be talking hella shit. He's like, this this, this ain't Berto. Uh, you fucking with the real one. This Berto. When he was talking to Robert Grell, this ain't Berto. You you fucking with the, the creme de la creme. You fucking with El Capitan. Numero uno. It, it, I don't know who you be. I don't know who you lost. That's it. I like when Floyd get in his zone. I don't know who you be. I don't know. Listen, I don't know who you be. I don't know who you lost to. I don't know who you be. I don't know who you lost to. Right, but anyway, he was dogging Shane Mosley in terms of um, <laughs> he 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 got a he he got on the green suit, but I'm money made. Okay, I don't, I don't know who you be. I don't know you. Okay, Ricky Hatton, he he can have everybody from the UK. He ain't fucking with me. Okay, he he ain't fucking with me. The the fans can't fans fan. You know, Floyd, he gets to stutter a little bit. Okay, Ricky had all the fans. Fans can't fight for him. I'm money man. Easy work. He easy. He easy. Floyd be getting the He easy as work. He easy as work. No, just playing. Shout out to Floyd Mayweather. Yiddy. TBE. Ricky had. Okay. Fans can't fight for him. This is why these channels can't fuck with me. I do impersonations. I'm entertaining y'all. We talk boxing. Yara. Fuck it. Shout out to the Bay Area. Shout out to the West Coast. We kill it. We kill it. New media kill it. Ego RB. We kill it. Okay. See, I'm on my Floyd shit because I got my groove back, baby. You know what I'm saying? This. I'm going I'm to just start. I, I am the Floyd of the boxing. Fuck, fuck what anybody say. I'm going to just start talking like Floyd. A bunch of channel. They ain't got to like me. Get the likes up. Okay. I'll be live stream. Name someone who could. Name someone in the sport. They do a live stream like me. They do. They giving you impersonation. Okay. Hey, this is, subscribers can't fight for you. <laughs> I like when Floyd be talking shit. I do. Fuck what Abel talking about. Oh, you you fucking blacks monkeys need to act a certain man. Talk that shit, Floyd. Okay. Like Abel, how's Abel gonna tell people? Listen. <clears throat> How Abel gonna say black, basically black fighters need to watch how they act outside the ring? Man, fuck that. Fuck that. <clears throat> because li <laughs> there's so many ways to slaughter what Abel Sanchez said in the last couple of days. Okay. Y'all want, can I get a hell yeah? Let me get a hell yeah. I Listen, I'm a Floyd Mayweather style. I'm gonna defeat, uh, I'm gonna defeat Abel Sanchez in his talking points with my talking points okay can i get a hell yeah get them likes up too let's go let's get it i'll show you how okay 
this is how you can defeat what Abel Sanchez is saying in regards to what he's recently said. We all know if you follow boxing, right? I ain't got to get into it. But one comment he did say was basically Errol Spence and guys like that, they got to monitor how they walk. And I see it. You know what I'm saying? I see a bunch of square motherfuckers and people like, oh, yeah, Crawford. It's, it's, listen, for the black fighter, shout out to the super chat. We get this money. Eagle Army, salute. Money gang, $5. It says Alabama checking in. Okay. Bomb Squad, Roll Tide, shout out to Bama, man. Y'all got you one. And we're going to see what he's talking about tonight versus Luis Ortiz. See? The fans hold it down. But this is what it is for the black fighter. I'm going to tell you, this is the black fighter experience. Why is Ego bringing up the race car? Why the fuck do you watch my video? Shut the fuck up. Don't watch me. Okay. So anyway, if you don't like race being brought up as it pertains to boxing, then get out of here. I don't care. I'm not going to not speak my point, whether it has something to do with race relations, whether it has something to do with a uh, fighter or prediction. I'm not going to not speak my mind because it makes you motherfuckers uncomfortable. Okay. Right. Listen. So this is what it is with the, the, the black fighter experience from the old media and what I've noticed with some fans, not all fans, because boxing has great fans also. And I'm not making it sound like it's just pure, nothing but unadulterated racism. There's a lot of fans that are just pure. They want the best versus the best. They're not uh, perpetuating stereotypes and stuff like that. But this is what I've seen by and large by a lot of people. This is what I've noticed, right? Is when, when, it, when it comes to a black fighter, this is what a lot of people do. And I can give you countless examples. See, this is what new media, this is what I do versus them. They say some bullshit, but they're not willing to prove it. I'm willing to, like Muhammad Ali said, uh, I'm ready to back up every word I'm saying. I'll back up every word I'm saying. Like, I'll show you. I can give you examples. We could do a hot seat right now. Again, Ego Ali. This this man is ugly. I'll, I'm ready to back up every word I'm saying. I'm fast, right? I'm on my Ali shit too. So this is what happens. Let's not get sidetracked. If a fighter like Errol Spence doesn't trash talk, Terrence Crawford doesn't trash talk, they tell them to be more like Adrian Broner. So Broner, we know he's always in the news for crazy shit and robberies and whatever groping murder whatever bro and obviously i'm exaggerating but he's in the news for some negative shit his car got shot up or a bitch accused him of some shit or he punched someone on the side we know you know what i mean he's in the news for people saying oh he said something racist the mexican i just beat the hell out of a mexican whatever he said i'm the can man right we know he's in the he's in the in the news for a lot of the wrong reasons oftentimes but that's what he does oh broner just threw change in walmart and just left so disrespectful he was in the express lane and said ah oh, man you know ab i don't need no change fuck y'all pick it up you know what i'm saying he, he treated the cashier like she was a coin star you know what i mean we we see it but then when spence jr doesn't really do that terrence crawford doesn't really do it tim bradley doesn't really do it guess what they say they need to sell the fight they need to be more like broner but then when you have a broner they say he's ignorant he's ghetto He's a bad look for boxing. He makes black people look bad, whatever they say. You know what I mean? So that's why I don't believe in what, and subscribe to what um, Abel is saying, right? He's saying that black fighters need to act a certain way, like civilized or whatever, like professional. That's cool. That works for some people. But guess what? Golovkin does that. First of all, Golovkin is not black. We know that, right? Golovkin is not black. And he acts civilized. He's very humble. He's not really disrespecting people, going out of his way to disrespect people. And look at his sales. But then I just went through the whole Floyd Mayweather impersonation where Floyd talked the most shit. Ricky Hatton, okay. Pacquiao, make me make me some sushi, Pacquiao. He did all that shit and he's outsold Golovkin. So what are you really saying? Conor McGregor has outsold Golovkin. And he, I don't know what you're thinking. I dribble heads off the camp. You'll do fucking none, right? So what are you saying? Like the guys who trash talk, they there's a lot of proven examples that are more buzzing than Golovkin. You know what I'm saying? Their fights are are hyped up. You get what I'm saying? So how are you gonna say, oh, black fighters shouldn't trash talk? They should be more cordial and but why is Floyd out so Golovkin? You know what I mean? Whether people were paying to see him win or paying to see him lose they were still paying okay who who want to step up in the hot seat 
they they think it's gonna be easy. You said it's gonna be easy, right? This ain't that's what I'm saying. This ain't Berto. This ain't Berto. Okay. Who wants to step up in the hot seat? Let's argue. Let's argue. Uh, man, I I dare someone to argue for Abel Sanchez's point right now in the hot seat. Right now, you can get all this hot, all this super chat money that I've, that I've collected all day. Come take my money. Okay, I'm on my Floyd shit right now. Philly shit. Okay. Hey, so what? Again, how is it this easy to disprove everything Abel said? Black fighters fight this way. Then we think of millions of people, including a guy tonight that doesn't fit that criteria. Oh, defense first and safety first and all this shit that they try to throw on black fighters, right? And then they get this, the common tricks, this, they get mad at the black community. Oh, you, you're fucking black. What is the deal? What's wrong with all the blacks? Like, you know what I mean? They get on their Seinfeld shit, acting like, what is wrong with all these black people? Well, well, please tell me what crawled up their butt. These blacks. <laughs> doom, do, doom, doom, doom. <laughs> y'all get all y'all Seinfeld shit acting like you know. What it is. The black channels. It's like they go to a a meeting just to talk about the same shit. What is what is? Like, don't play dumb. Disprove. That's all you got to do. Ego tweaking right now. I told you, this is easy as work. I'm not tweaking. I'm spitting gems. I'm dropping gems. Y'all should pay me for this. Y'all should pay me for the gems I'm dropping. Because a lot of people don't. I told you, I'm ego belly. A lot of people ain't dropping it real like this. They're, oh, yeah. You know what I mean? Oh, Crawford needs to do this. You have all these nitpicks of what Crawford needs to do to sell better. And why he sold uh 50 000 with victor postal what about victor postal why didn't he boost the numbers why did he's a good fighter he had a belt why is it all fall on crawford why is it all crawford oh just because it says crawford postal he has to support all the numbers and truth be told who said i'm out no one gives a fuck are you out who are you you know what i mean and if you tell me you out in a in a, in a way to like oh this is this race talk i'm i'm out then you're gonna be put out you know what I'm saying? If you just out because you got to go to lunch or work or something, that's cool. But see, people try to, they hate the message, so they just, I'm out. Enough of this this race. What is wrong with all the black, the black channel? Like, no, we're not doing it. We're not playing these games. Who's going to step up right now? And I ain't talking about a Channing Tatum dance movie. Who's going to step up and argue with what Abel Sanchez said? argue like let's debate it gladiator style bro i'm not racist but black fighters long list made the history of boxing what it is facts see listen this is this is why we have so many listen if a fighter doesn't fight fighter b fighter a don't fight fighter b not even knowing what's happening behind the scenes the fans like the people that are in here right now we got to get the likes up. We have 250 people in here. We don't even have 200 likes. Smash the like button. We dropping gems. Ego Army, stand up. Stand up for something real in this sport of boxing because I'm fired up right now. Now, listen, the fans, when fighter A don't want to fight fighter B, not knowing promoter issues, or managerial decisions of what they're trying to build and, and stuff like that, we don't even know all the behind the scenes stuff. This stuff. But a lot of people in the comment section, oh, this fighter's ducking, ducking. But y'all are ducking me right now. I'm talking about something real. I have an open hot seat. And all the people that, that make video, don't wait. Don't wait. Why wait? Why delay? Make the, make the debate right now in the hot seat. You know what I'm saying? Don't wait till this video re-airs the replay. And then like, oh, Eagle, he brought up race. And the, debate me right now. Debate me right now. If you vouch for what Abel Sanchez says, do it now. Let's talk about it right now. You got me. This is not no pre-recorded shit. You got me live right now. I don't agree with what Abel. I'm not calling this man out of his name and, and saying, you know what I mean? Because some people are that hot where I still got to be professional. You know what I'm saying? So I'm just saying I disagree with what he said. And I don't appreciate it. I don't think it was warranted debate me now let's talk about it right now but you guys are quick to call these fighters who, who risk their life 
cowards, right? You're quick to call them cowards and duckers and all this cherry pickers. And oh, Danny Garcia, he cherry picked Brandon Rio. You guys are cherry picking because you don't want that work. You have all this shit to say, and then I have a hot seat, which is civilized. You know what I mean? I don't have to do a bunch of name calling. We can go bar for bar, line for line, fact for fact. Ego, why are you hating on Abel? All he said was black fighters don't sell, and it's kind of true. Get your ass in the hot seat. You're in the hot seat. His name is Spence, number one, pound for pound legend. Finally, we got somebody. Let me repeat for the crowd or new viewers. He says, Ego, why are you hating on Abel? So once again, it's, it's my problem. I'm responding to what he said, but I'm the hater. Okay. So Abel's not hating on black fighters. I'm just hating on Abel. Poor Abel. See, and this is the thing. Abel is one man. The black community is not one man right what i'm saying is about a response to what one man said what abel said affects a whole community right the african-american community but again i'm hating on abel okay then he says all he said was black fighters don't sell and it's kind of true so you tell me how it's kind of true up in this hot seat go you're on the timer No, see, this is what they always do. You made the statement and now you're asking questions. Don't ask me shit. I'll answer whatever you want me to answer after you answer my first question. I am the host. This is my show, the ego show. You don't ask me a question when I ask you a question first and you avoided it. You're the ducker. Name one black fighter that can sell outside of Floyd. No, we're not playing those games. Answer my question, then I'll answer your question. But you won't even make it past my question. You said whatever you said. Black fighters is kind of true. So answer that. They already putting you on the timer, man. Like, you done. You toast. You dog food. Wow. Shout out to my dude from the UK. RTD Online. Make sure you check out his movement. He's working hard. He helped me out this week with the, the Kell Brook videos edit do he does everything high quality shout out to my man rtd he says anthony joshua proves that wrong straight away so does floyd by a by a landmark so i didn't even have to people in the comment section are killing you you said name one black that sells okay well rtd just said anthony joshua which is apparent that he can sell oh but that i didn't say the uk okay now you just sound stupid your time's almost up Hope has been fun. He says, nope, Anthony Joshua can't sell. He ain't a pay-per-view star. You're you're really dumb because all that shit in the UK is pay-per-view, dummy. Just because it's not pay-per-view in the United States, a region he is not from, doesn't mean that it's not pay-per-view where he is from. So he could fight Deontay Wilder's leftovers, Eric Molina, and sell 20,000 plus tickets against a guy who'd been knocked out by Chris Ariola and also Deontay Wilder. And you're saying that Joshua can't sell. Really? Good job vouching for Abel. You're making him look great right now. I'm gonna give you one more opportunity to redeem yourself. You can't fuck with me. You can't fuck with this movement. I'm talking about. Also, black fighters fight backwards. Okay, so there's a black fighter. He's darker than me. He's dark skin. And he's fighting tonight. He goes by the name of Deontay DeBronze Bowman Wilder. I'm so frustrated. So he fights backwards. That's how he always fights, going backwards. <laughs> Too easy. Errol Spence just fought Lamont Peterson. He fought that fight running away. He was running away from Lamont Peterson. Even Lamont, Pe Lamont Peterson was getting dogged. He wasn't even fighting backwards. No, okay, see, this they changed the goalpost. You made an ignorant statement, and now you said majority do. I just named two fighters. Get this clown out of here. Put your L's up real quick. Sean Porter, man, I mean... This, this is too easy. He, he's clearly... How dare you speak to me like that? You should kneel before me. Good job voucher for Abel. Get this clown out of here. Shooters, engage. It's like... I mean, you're not, you're not even... You don't even have a point at this point. It's just everyone can see. LOL, you black. Uh, okay. Great. See? LOL, you black. <laughs> what does that have to do with anything? LOL, you blocked. I'm black and you blocked. How about that? What the fuck? This shit is too easy. Like I said, who else? Step up. This ain't no dance movie, dog. Step up. 
If you agree with what Abel Sanchez, we'll, we'll settle it right now. If you vouch for that and you think that all this shit Abel Sanchez said was true, which we easily throughout this and other live streams have proven wrong, then step up right now. Who wants it? That's what I'm saying. Like you, you, Tate Davis is, he's ducking. You guys are ducking. Because you don't want to step up. And I know not everyone agrees with me. And I know some of y'all screen names be on other people's videos. Like, oh, yeah, Abel, he, what he said wasn't even bad. You know what I mean? So where are those people? You So 264 people in this motherfucking stream right now. And y'all all agree with me? Y'all all agree with people who are angry or feel a type of way about what Abel Sanchez said? You know what I mean? There has to be some cowards in, in with 266 people. There has to. I mean, shout out to Cali. Said Nicholas Walters is not a runner. I mean, there, there's a ton of people. It's eat. Listen, <clears throat> I'm from the Bay. Like E40 said, tell me when to go. Say, tell me when to say go. And I'll start telling you black fighters who don't majority of them fight going backwards all the time, right? Just say go and I'll just list them. Just say go. All someone has to do is say go and I can spout off the top of my head and prove him wrong. I don't have to think about it. Someone said go, boom. James Kirkland, Paul Williams, Robert Easter, Errol Spence Jr., Jermel Charlo, Jamal Charlo, Deontay Wilder. Who else do we got? Uh, Mir Mansoor. When is he ever just like... Oh, fuck this, and, and on the back foot fighting. When have you seen Amir Mansour do that, right? He came out of prison and is like, let's get that work. Jared Swift heard. Andre Ward don't be like running and all that. Y'all complain about low blows and smothering Kovalev and all that shit, so he's not doing that. Adrian Broner, y'all say he's flat-footed and he'll never be Floyd, right? Adonis Stevenson will smoke your ass out. Sean Porter stays in your chest. You know what the funny thing? Adrian Broner was was getting outboxed by Adrian Granados in them early rounds. I was in Cincinnati. Shout out to the Natty. Broner was the one turning up on Adrian Granados. Sean Porter was more aggressive than Adrian Granados was when they fought. But once again, using that Abel Sanchez logic, then why did the Mexican, Mexican-American Adrian Granados, why was he boxing? Why was he boxing more than Broner? You know what I'm saying? He got on his toe because you know how I know? Because I, I fuck with with uh, Adrian Granados and I was surprised and impressed that he was got on his toes and was boxing like that. Amir Imam, he's not just retreating and all this shit. Boxing ego, I'm black and I'm proud. Listen, wherever you guys are from, be proud of that. I have no beef with that. If you're from Guadalajara, Mexico and you like Mexican fighters, you like Canelo, that's great. It's when you start disrespecting the game and other people in the game to big up where you're from and you don't call it fair. You know what I'm saying? Mexico has produced some great talent, some brawlers, some sweet scientists. You know what I mean? You can't put Juan Manuel Marquez in the category of Jorge Arce. They don't fight alike. You know what I mean? The way Canelo, the way Mikey Garcia fight is different than the way Julio Cesar Chavez senior fights. You know what I mean? or whoever we're talking about, Johnny Gonzalez or whoever. You know what I mean? Shout out to Thomas Sapp, $5 Super Chat. Ego is the best channel for boxing. I'm here to entertain, I'm here to enlighten, and here to be myself. That's all I can do, that's all I can be. This is a promise, this is what I can give you. If you come to my channel, you get my real thoughts. You know what I mean? I try to drop some gems here and there if I can. Humor y'all, entertain y'all. My dude said Apollo Creed. Yep, Apollo Creed didn't fight. That that man was willing to die, and he did die, versus Ivan Drago. Yeah, he clearly could have should have got on his bicycle, but he let Drago hit him with a thousand right and left hands. <laughs> Living in America, he let Drago kill him to not run. So what are y'all talking about? Throw the damn towel, like. That's why the motherfucker, the black dude with his trainer or whatever, with the, he had beads of sweat. He was, he was crying and shit. Throw the towel. Throw the damn towel. That man, Apollo, died. And Michael B. Jordan, he had that little, uh, that little offspring. 
he skeeted in something before he died, but he was willing to die just to not live up to Abel Sanchez's stereotype. Go to damn town. That motherfucker was feeling, he was in the zone. But you know, I never understood, like not to, Rocky Four is my favorite Rocky, FYI. But you know, I never understood Rocky was there. I think he had like a Gucci like fleece on and shit. Oh, you, you know, let me tell you something. You know, uh, uh, Apollo, you die. <laughs> That's how Stallone. <laughs> Why the fuck was Stallone just act, watching his best friend? You running beaches with this motherfucker and shit, and you're watching him getting bludgeoned to death. Uh, what are you doing, Apollo? Yeah, yeah. Jab, blood for trauma. Uh, like. For real, you you watching this Russian motherfucker destroy him, and you just not gonna throw the towel just on your own, like just off GP. Like I know his wife, I know his family. I'm gonna let your husband die in front of the crowd. Hey Apollo, what are you doing? By the way, fight like a black. <laughs> That's it. Abel Sanchez. Let Abel write the fucking Rocky Four script. You like get on your butt. Fight like a black. Uh, don't let Dragon do Don't let him do this to you. You don't know about the three seashells. Fight like a nigga. <laughs> let Abel Sanchez write that fucking script. He was like, hey, yo. Hey, yo, Apollo, you, you getting bodied. Why you let him do this? The Russian, he got steroids. Fight like a, fight like a black. Do the mirror. All you gotta do is run. Run. Run like a black. Run like a black. Like, y'all sound stupid as fuck. Get the fuck off my channel. Every one of you. I'm a kid. I'm like Martin used to do. I'm kicking all y'all out. <laughs> Bobby Weed, Philly Shell. Fight like a black. Like, fight like a black. The motherfucker got killed in there. Throw the damn towel. <laughs> How you come out to James Brown? <laughs> living in America. James Brown. Living in America. Gotta get. Do, do, do. Like, how you do? You got fireworks, bad bitches, and peacocks, and pyrotechnics. And, got to get. I don't know. Great. And James Brown and shit, you get killed. That has to be embarrassing. Yo, dumbass. You gonna come out to one of the most popping singers and shit. And then you just die after. Like, you did all that to die, Apollo. What's your dumb ass? That's a, that's a huge L. Like, I mean, picture that. Like, <laughs> you, you fucking come out to Michael Jackson. And he's like, I gave money. Ooh, I gave. And he puts on this great show. And you're like, oh, Michael did that. Michael Jackson, he, <laughs> he really did his thing. Shout out to Apollo Creed. You know what I'm saying? Michael... <laughs> I came follow. I, I can't. And he slashes on the guitar and all this shit. And then you just die. Like, you just had, like, the Godfather of Soul introduce you and put on. Like, that could have been a concert because he was he was jamming. And then you just die. And it's still a, a bunch of my best friend get killed. <laughs> I love Hollywood. They be doing some dumb shit. But anyway, this is what I didn't understand about Rocky Four. I don't know. I don't know. Was Rocky his trainer? Because I thought the black dude was his trainer or whatever. You know what I mean? The black. I think the dude was from Philly too. But the bald black dude, I thought he was training. Why is he like, throw the damn towel? Like, why didn't you throw the towel, motherfucker? You got, y'all in the corner got one towel. Like, you thought a, Drago was clearly killing you. He was clearly hitting you with that. Huh, huh. <laughs> and then throw the damn towel. Like, you throw the towel. Like, I, man, if, if Rocky wasn't going to throw the towel, I would throw, like, a, the bar stool in there. Like, I'm not going to let my brother die. You know what I mean? I'll hit, I'll throw a, a bar stool just to break up the act. He was clearly getting killed. <laughs> that man, Drago, hit him with a 30 piece. Like, you can't survive a 30 piece. Lesson of the day. You can't survive. There's no way. Drago like six five six six, and he hit you with a thirty piece. I don't know what I just froze. I should have threw the towel. Yeah, 
MDK, motherfucker, murder, death, kill. You just let your friend get killed. Then you went to the mountains trying to extract revenge. Drago, Drago! <laughs> like, he, Apollo Steve should be screaming Apollo because you, you let that motherfucker die. And Michael B. Jordan Killmonger had to come back. You know what I mean? Rocky was tripping. Shout out to Stallone, though. I like Stallone movies. Let me tell you something you already know. The world ain't all sunshine and rainbows. It's a me and crew plate, and it'll beat you there if you let it. Nothing is gonna get it as hard as hard as life. Y'all ain't fucking with these impersonations. Y'all ain't fucking with the channel. New media, stand up, gang gang. I'm feeling it. I told you I'm on my Floyd Mayweather shit today. Oh, ego, this ego fella, he, he's being cocky. I don't give a fuck. I'm on my Floyd shit. You some easy ass work. All these, all these channels, they some easy ass work. Okay. Shane Mo, he, I'm money man. Why he got on the green? Ooh, I'm so scared. I'm on my Floyd shit, man. Floyd was getting a haircut, I think, on the Oscar De La Hoya 24-7. And then he was like, he was like, Oscar, Oscar De La Hoya, Oscar a bitch. He was like, it was like late as fuck in the morning. And he was like, 4 a.m., I'm gonna I'm a, I'm a go for a job because Oscar a bitch. He was like, Oscar a bitch. I can't wait. I can't wait. I'm gonna show you. I'm on my Floyd shit. Oh yeah, he did. Shout out to King Corleone. See, real motherfuckers remember this shit. Not you new, new booty ass, rookie ass boxing fan. He was like, he crying, talking about I took his bags, I took his luggage. Yeah, okay, I, I took him. That motherfucker was on it. See, I, I will say this, Floyd, a lot of these fighters can learn because Floyd was selling his ass off. Like he's stealing his bags and shit. People like that drama. That's like, like that love and hip hop type shit. Okay. He he said I I took his luggage, I took his I took his bags. You you still ain't gonna do shit. You ain't gonna do shit. <laughs> I took his bag. You gonna, I know he want to say fuck shit damn, but he can't. I'm money man. He he want to protect. He he the golden boy. He want to protect his image. He want to say fuck shit damn like me. Okay, but he can't. He brought the chicken out. See, shout out to the real boxing fans. Floyd back his shit up all the time. Easy work. Yeah. Hey, when, when Floyd clowned Victor Ortiz, that shit was so funny to me. He was on like the 24-7. He was like, Victor Ortiz, he said, when he fought Maidana, he was like, oh, I, I really wasn't myself that night. I wasn't, I wasn't there. I wasn't, oh, you was there. You was there, motherfucker. You was there getting your ass beat. <laughs> like, that's some cold shit. He said, he said, Victor Ortiz, he said in the Maidana fight, oh, I really, I wasn't myself, I wasn't myself that night. <laughs> I really wasn't myself that night. I wasn't there. Oh, you was there. You was there, motherfucker. You was there getting your ass beat. <laughs> That's disrespect. <laughs> Floyd is funny as fuck to me. He said, oh, you was there, you was there, motherfucker. You was there getting your ass beat. <laughs> Shout out to Prime Floyd, man. Oh, I really wasn't, I wasn't, I wasn't there. I wasn't myself that night. Oh, you was there. You was there, motherfucker. You was there getting your ass beat. Actually, the only time where I really wasn't feeling the, uh, the Floyd shit talk, it was when he, when he shit talked his pops. I was like, all right. See, but see, this is the thing. I'm new media. They, oh, you love Floyd. You're, you're, you're in love with Floyd and all this shit, right? But I'm a I'm a man just because I don't agree with everything Floyd does. I like Floyd, to be honest. I do like I like Floyd. I think he's a great skilled fighter, but that doesn't mean I agree with him. all lives matter. Like if he says some coon shit or something, I don't mean I'm just gonna naturally, but that's what you guys do. Some of you guys. It's cause you're man fans. See, when when he said that to his pops, even though I like Floyd, right? I like him, I could still say Floyd's a dope fighter, but I can't ride with that. Cause I thought that was too far. He was like, he was like, man, fuck you. You a faggot. Like he was talking shit to his dad. Y'all gotta go watch that. And I and I seen his face and I could tell Floyd Sr. was like sad. He was like, you barely, you was in prison. Roger, my real trainer. You, you barely even trained. Who, all the fighters you trained got their ass beat. Oscar De La Hoya, Ricky, like, 
He was he was going in too far on his pops. Like, you know what I'm saying? You a fact. Like, I wish I would call my dad a faggot. Like, if, if I call my dad that, like, uh, there would be no boxing ego. Like, you know what I'm saying? There would be no more. My dad would do something. And if he couldn't do it with his hands, because, you know, I got, got I got bigger than my pops and shit. That motherfucker got a gun, uh, multiple guns, uh, a sledgehammer, a shovel, a spat, something. But I, I, I wouldn't even do that. But I couldn't even afford to do that. You know what I mean? My my pops would not accept that. But yeah, I, I thought that was way too far. You know, you guys could check it on YouTube. He was like, "You ain't even my real trainer. You was in jail. Ro Roger trained me. Roger, my roots. <laughs> like, damn, you just going in on pops like that, huh? That's, that's what you telling me, huh? Yeah, okay. The man that birthed you." You was once his sperm, okay. You going in on your pop, huh? Like, I thought that was too, too, too much. But I think Floyd, as he matured, I think he realized it because he brought in his dad. Well, plus Roger was getting sick, you know what I mean? But aside from that, I think he brought in his dad even before Roger, like, probably was real sick or whatever. And he's like, I want to close my career with, with the man that started my career, my father. You know what I'm saying? So it all worked out in the end. Not to dredge up some old shit, but anyway. But that's what I'm saying. These man fans, they, I like Golovkin. So no matter what, no matter what his trainer says, no matter what his promoter, I agree with it. I don't, I don't do that. If, if I like or dislike someone, I don't mean I'm riding with everything that they say. Like Floyd Mayweather, I like him. I'm not riding when you, you roasting pops and calling your pops the F word and, uh, it's just overkill, you know what I'm saying? Where where I'm from, how I was raised. You know what I mean? But a bunch of man fans, they'll they'll accept whatever. They get like, let, let's say they love Golovkin. Golovkin can shit on a plate, and no, <laughs> like you know what I'm saying? And say it's Tierra Masu, and I'm gonna to eat it just because he did it. Oh, this Golovkin shit. What is this? This ain't regular poop. This is that Kazakhstan poop. Like, did you poop this out? This shit good. This shit good, Golovkin. Like, y'all would really do like. <laughs> it, it almost tastes like fudge. Like, <laughs> like you're eating Golovkin shit. Yeah, he's like, I know, eat my poop. Like, but y'all would do it. Y'all would eat shit. Literally eat shit just because. That's how y'all act. Y'all act, you know what I mean? Just because you like a fight. I'm not doing all that. Like, you know what I'm saying? If I agree, I agree. If I don't, I don't. Shit, it tastes pretty good. What's this, Betty Crocker? Like, you guys are fucking disgusting. You're eating another man's shit right now. Why do you guys do that? Ego, can I ask one question? It's a live stream. I should tell you no just because you asked if you could ask a question. Quit, man. Why would I quit? Quit what? Will you live broadcast during the fight? No. I don't usually like doing that because, you know what I'm saying? I'm trying to see the fight. I want to watch it. I want to study it, pick it up. You know what I mean? Not to have fucking Slavic come back. I'm back, motherfucker. You should have never blocked me. Why did you block me? Jake, this thing, why did you block me? Like, you know what I'm saying? I'm trying to enjoy this shit. I don't want y'all 320 motherfuckers watching the fight with me like that. Y'all Chris Slavic. No matter how many times, I'm always coming back. You, your moderators, these shooters can't find me. They can't play. I'm in the system. Jake, me. Like, um, no, I'm trying to watch the, watch the fight. So I won't stream live. I'm lit right now. Man, this is what we do. Shout out to the fans. Yeah, you. that's what I'm saying. See, people... People do stuff like that, put copyrighted shit on their channel because they need that stuff to, to grow. I don't need that. Like, you know what I'm saying? I don't even have to cover the fights. Like, you know what I mean? Not to be boastful or cocky, but like, I'm not even at the fight. You know what I'm saying? But we still got 300 plus people and we had a good retention for this particular live stream. I'm not even at the fight. It's not like there's no wild and crazy background with models and, and topless dancers and shit. Like, we just vibe and this is what my community is able to do because we've worked hard for it. You know what I mean? People want that real, they want boxing talk, you know what I mean? But putting people copyrighted 
shit up and stuff. That's not the way to go. Because eventually YouTube will end that. You know what I mean? But usually people that do that, they either don't know the rules because they haven't studied. See, I study. I understand and read through the, the YouTube community guidelines. We live in such a, a fast-paced, like, digital society where people don't look. You know what I'm saying? They, they don't look. They don't investigate. Oh, oh, let me put this video up. And then you put it up. You got a, a copyright strike. Your channel is about to get terminated. <laughs> what are you doing? Uh, right? You got to pay attention. Know the rules. Study the rules. I've done it. So, yeah, usually people that put up Showtime fights and stuff, it's cool for the moment. But then when they start flagging you and your channel gets shut down, now you got to start from scratch. Or, like I said, some people are just so desperate. They're trying to get on the, the level of popular boxing channels. So they're they're willing to risk it all and just air other people's footage and, ho and uh, hope they don't get caught. The rats be getting your Instagram, though. But that's not off copyright. They just be, like, hating on, like something if it's too violent like a street fight or whatever oh, fuck them yeah i live in detroit shout out to the d man that's right boxing ego your channel is good shout out to jessica <laughs> man y'all try it so is that dude freddie roach um y'all keep telling me about errol spence to check his twitter if the fans want me to check Errol Spence's Twitter, can I get a hell yeah? We live, baby. Do y'all want me to see? Oh, make sure. Can y'all do me a favor? If y'all could help out, if you could help me out, can I get one more hell yeah? Keep it going, people. Keep it, keep it, keep it going one time. Yeah, hell yeah. If you can help me out, yo, check it, bust it, and help me out. Uh, okay. Make sure y'all go to Errol Spence Jr.'s social media. Wish that man a happy birthday. You can tell him that Boxing Ego sent you. But yeah, make sure you wish him a happy birthday. It's his birthday. Shout out to all the March babies. I am a March baby myself. Mine is at the end of the month. Shout out to the Rams the Aries, not not the Los Angeles Rams. I'm talking about the Aries, those Rams, because it's 49ers all day, you know what I mean? And that's a rival, so I'm not talking about those Rams. Shout out to the Aries, shout out to the Pisces and all the March babies. But, um, and shout out to you if it's your birthday this month. Ego putting in that work, well done, man, thank you. I'm on Fences Verified page. He says, if Kell Brook gets a world title, I'll fight him at 154. Ego, you're entertaining and intelligent. Don't change. Love your channel. Shout out to you. I appreciate that. Man, I'm here to entertain. We talk business. We talk real boxing. But I like to have fun, too. So I'm glad you guys enjoy. Hit the like button. Hit that like button if you know and you like what I'm doing. Um, yeah, man, we get a little wild crazy, but it's we still always bring it back. Ego speaks the truth. You got class too. Yeah, I mean, I respect everybody. I respect all genders, race, like sexual preferences. I don't, I'm a chill dude. You know what I mean? I don't care where you're from. Like, and part of that, I mean, I'm not gonna say that's the only reason, but Part of it is like my dad was in the military, you know what I mean? So I, I lived in England. I was born in New Mexico. I lived in California, which is all obviously a huge melting pot. Like you learn diversity. Like I, I've had so many friends that got stationed in crazy Germany and Japan and people who came from those places. So I had all types of friends growing up and you know what I mean? That's how boxing should be too, but it's not. You know what I mean? Not everyone has the same upbringing as me. Someone said, I'm in Japan now. Shout out to Japan. I've never been there, but I would love to go. Um, so, Errol Spence says, if this listen, Minister Society voice, Bill Duke. Shout out to Bill Duke. You know you done fucked up. You know you done fucked up. This is how Kell Brook fucked up. Because, and this, listen, and, and listen to me, people. Everyone, oh, you're racially biased and all this shit on my channel. Okay, shut up. 
I'm racially biased, but I, I keep it consistent. Kell Brook, the way he took the Errol Spence Jr. loss at first wasn't bad, but it seems like Kell Brook is actually more accepting of the Golovkin loss and doesn't want to give Errol Spence credit. I don't like that. But the same way I tell you I don't like that with Kell Brook, I tell you that with David Lemieux when Billy Joe Saunders completely outclassed him. And it's the same way that I tell you that Sergey Kovalev, the way he's acting to the Andre Ward losses, I don't like that. I don't. I think it's poor sportsmanship. I think it's like classless to just not admit defeat. It's a gentleman's sport. You know what I mean? But everyone, oh, you're racially biased. But I just said the same consistent behavior. I didn't like when Kell Brook did it. I didn't like it when Lemieux did it versus Billy Joe Saunders. And I don't like it when Kovalev's doing it to Ward. But they'll take out me me saying something about Sergey Kovalev and Ward. Oh, you're a Ward dick rider. That S-O-G dick. You just love the black fighter. You love the black fighter. But what about when I said it to Kell Brook? What about when I said it to David Lemieux not giving Billy Joe Saunders props? What happened? That's why I don't fear when people name call and, and say this type of shit to me because I know it's not true. And if you fuck with the channel for real, for real, and you watch my videos over the years, then you'll know it's not true too. And we keep it moving. Back to this Kill Brook situation. You know you done fucked up. You know you done fucked up. Brother, I dig your style of commentary. You keep it real but professional. Continue doing your thing, fam. Salute. Like I said, the mom and pop stores, all the real motherfuckers. Ego Valley. Kell Brook, you know you're fucked up. You just fought Rabchenko. You said you're making, in my opinion, I think Kell Brook's making excuses why he lost to Errol Spence. From what I've seen in interviews, Sky Sports and video interviews and stuff, he's like, oh, I, I took basically, I, I drained me weight and all this. No, don't, don't do that. Don't. It's unnecessary. You're a good fighter, but he's like. When I fought Arrow, basically, I drained me weight. And don't do that. Don't take it there. The man beat you. Like, you drained me weight, but you knew me weight and all this shit. You knew what, <laughs> what weight the fight was at. You knew me weight when he was the mandatory. You were still talking about Jeff Lacey. Still talking about, I got a right hand chocolate brown in me weight. No, you know what I mean? Wait, I can't wait to release. You know what I mean? You were saying all that. So don't switch. <laughs> See, I can tell the people that fuck with my channel because y'all using the same jokes that I've said. I want a couple things me way. That's what I'm saying. Like, come on with this me weight shit. Straight up. Like, because, see, let's get to the super chat because I don't, I don't want to lose it. Talk about me weight. Shout out to my dude from New Zealand, uh, L Dog. $10 super chat. Shmoney gang. When people say Ego is a Triple G hater, I instantly know they know nothing about Ego. Look at his old videos when Triple G was on the come up. Ego was praising him for good reason too. He was feared. Exactly. See, but boxing is a what have you done for me lately sport. Not just with like uh, the fighters and like, oh, Danny Garcia last fought Brandon Real, but also people in boxing. Like me, like being a voice in boxing and doing commentary. So because I have a criticism for, let's say, Golovkin now, a decision he made now, they throw out the window everything before that. Or they don't do the research. They haven't researched enough about my channel or looked at them old videos. Study. Study while I'll be mad. Study the tapes. They haven't done that. So they just assume, oh, yeah, you hate Triple G. Well, you hate him. But when Sergio Martinez looked like he was avoiding him, when Miguel Cotto looked like he was avoiding him, I did videos about that. And I'm like, Cotto, you the champion. Why not fight Golovkin? Sergio, that'd be a good fight. You know what I mean? But they don't care about that. They just say, oh, you made a criticism of my guy Golovkin, so you, you hate him. You're a racist. Whatever. Anyway, back to Kell Brook. He's, he's, to me, he's downgrading Errol Spence's performance. And the thing is, you gave it your best. He's like you you were giving Errol Spence some rounds, some good rounds, doing good early. Even when you got hurt, you were still showing heart. You know what I mean? Just in the end, you had to take a knee and couldn't continue or whatever. You know what I mean? So I hate when the fighters appear like salty. Just move on. Just fight the Rabchenkos and or whoever else you fight and move on. The the loss basically. You know what I mean? I don't know if Kell Brook has a list because sometimes when he talks, it sounds like he has like a draw or something. But anyway, um, the 
you making up why it happened. And Andre Ward is is fun is so funny. Andre Ward had the the foresight to um Shout out to Robert Singleton. $10 super chat. We growing, man. We just trying to grow the brand. A lot coming. $10 super chat. Shout out to my dude, Rob. Ego, you're a boxing apostle. Keep preaching that boxing gospel. Go blue. Shout out to you, man. I really appreciate the support. But um, it's weird because I went to Andre Ward, his media day for a Kovalev fight, I think it was. And he was like, he's like, yeah, I see the media. And he was just shadow boxing. And you could tell he was annoyed because he knows all the double standards and all the bullshit old media does, right? And what he said basically is, he says, so after this fight, he says, y'all can explain and, and make excuses on why it happened or just accept that it happened. He said something like that, right? Because he knew he wasn't going to get the credit for beating Kovalev, which is actually true to this day, even in the second fight. Let's say you had Kovalev winning the first fight. He didn't win it. But even if you had him winning it and you thought it was close, Ward gave him, he gave him the part de the rematch. And Kovalev did worse. He did worse. I'm not saying he did horrific, but it was much worse. You didn't knock him down. You never hurt him. And you got smashed up. Or as my UK fans say, you got smashed to bits. <laughs> you know what I mean? And then, um, see, this another casual fan, Kovalev beat Ward the first time. What are you smoking? More bullshit. So once again, another motherfucker who can't listen. I just said, even if you had Kovalev winning the fight, he didn't win, which is a fact. If I go to his box rec, it's going to show an L, just like you're getting right now, an L. I said, even if you had him winning, he still lost and did substantially worse in the rematches. So just like Kovalev in the first and second fight, now you collect your L. And if you keep going, then just like Kovalev, you'll get a second L. This is how that works. Box rec and punch count are two different things. Kovalev lost the fight. Three judges scored it in favor of Ward. So on his record, when he's getting interviewed, they'll say, "Hey, your your last two fight or your last two losses." That's what they will say. They're not going to say, "Hey, your one loss to Ward." They're going to say, "Hey, your two losses to Andre Ward." So sit down. You just got your second L, like Kovalev, and build. Now you can, you know, what I mean, go to a Shabransky channel, right? You can go to a Igor McKelkin channel and maybe you can get some wins, but you don't get the wins here with me because I am the Andre Ward of this shit. Son of God. Fair? L1 and L2. Just like a PlayStation controller. I'm giving out L's. L1 and L2. That's my new shit. I treat y'all like a PlayStation controller. L1 and L2. Because you getting two L's like Cool J. You dig? See, I'm too witty for this. You can't fuck with me. Stop it. <sighs> anyway, I'm sorry, people. L1 and L2. Y'all know how I do. PlayStation. I'm, I'm PS4. I told you I'm on my floor shit today. Just like that. I can destroy you. Just like that. What movie is that from? Um... Yeah, Kovalev lost. I just don't like the, the poor sportsmanship. I, I really don't. He lost. He lost. Deal with it. Bounce back. Wow, you guys are good. Someone said, go on the child. That's a, absolutely. He said, and no one will have to get destroyed just like that. Shout out to sweet brother Noomsi. I told you, this is the most entertaining live streams. I am the stream king. And I told you I was on my Floyd shit today. You know what I mean? Because I'm feeling good. Wilder versus Ortiz got me pumped. Barrera versus Bevo, like I'm, I'm ready. I'm ready for it. I woke up, I got a good night's sleep. I felt, I slept kind of fucked up though. Like I, like I, my neck was all cranked, but it was a deep sleep. You know, you had like the drool and all types of shit. You were like, oh shit, like, what the fuck? But I'm pumped. So I'm, I wanted to use this energy for a live stream. But anyway, yeah, I, I just don't like, 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 Kell Brook. Just give Errol Spence his credit. I don't want to hear about, like, so, so realistically, basically, a sacrifice me weight. No, like, ain't no sacrifice me weight. You knew what weight he was at. No one told you to go fight Gennady. Yeah, no, you know what I mean? No one told you to jump up two weight divisions and eat fish and chips and all this to weigh 160 and then still have to have your mandatory. So, you know what I mean? 
you knew me way, you knew, you knew me way with way and, and Dominic Angle and me way, and you knew all that stuff. So stop. I'm just, I'm just man, basically. So basically, yeah. In the Angle Gym in me way, you knew me way, you know. Everybody say me way, you knew this. So don't take away credit. But anyway, this is how you fucked up, because. <laughs> this is how you know you don't fucked up because now Errol Spence is on your helmet again at the new weight. Now he's trying to come to me weight again. You know what I'm saying? You should have just allowed it to be whatever it was because now if you want a couple things me weight and me weight and all this shit, now he's trying to he's he's gunning for you again at a new weight class. So there's what are you gonna say if you lose? That's what I'm saying. You should have just you should have just left. We just went on because now if he what it was it gonna look like if he comes in his first fight at 154 and he beats you again at midway? You know what I mean? That you're by that time you're gonna have more fights at that weight, right? Than he does. And now he just in case anyone's just um, joined after Kell Brook, he beat Rabchenko, basically, right? He beat him today, second round knockout. He's fighting at 154. Now this is what Errol Spence decided to listen. This is what Errol Spence decided to tweet. If Kell Brook gets a world title, I'll fight him at 154. And listen, if Saddam Ali fights Liam Smith, Kell Brook could fight the winner of that and possibly get a title. You know what I mean? He sparred with Liam Smith before. So then now you got Errol Spence on your ass. Shout out to the DeSoto Texas. I don't know what y'all put in the water. I don't know what's going on in DeSoto. I haven't been to Texas like that. I've been to Texas for layovers, but I never just like went, th rode through the city and like had a hotel and stuff. But I don't know what y'all are doing, but shout out to DeSoto, Texas. This man wants work. This dude, Errol Spence is like acting like the Terminator and shit. Uh, nice night for a walk, right? <laughs> nice night for a walk. Like your clothes, your boots, give them to me. That That's, Errol Spence is on that shit. <laughs> Your keys, your clothes, your boots, give them to me. What are you doing down the hill? <laughs> the man is trying to come to one. He called out Canelo at 160. And then Golden Boy. <laughs> right? <laughs> he called out Gala or Canelo at 160, right? Tweak mode. As long as, as, long as we got viewers and super chats and, and people laughing, then I'll be on tweak mode. You're on geek mode. Fuck you mean. Anyway, no one can. I told you, I'm in the zone today. Leave me alone, because you will get roasted, and you'll get them two L's like Cool J. Anyway, this man, Errol Spence Jr., in, in recent memory, called out Canelo, who just moved up to 160, and it was Golden Boy, or at least a Golden Boy employee, B Hop, who made a reasoning why Errol Spence doesn't doesn't he's not owed a fight or something say he has to do more and who is he to call out king canelo or something the video is on the internet right so b hop said that so my thing is this i hate 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 in boxing where people they'll hear a call out the other side it is up to that other person to call a motherfucker's bluff and people always do this, and I hate, hate, hate. I loathe it. I got to use a big word for it. I hate when people try to dismiss someone's call out. Oh, they don't really want. They did it to Broner. Whatever you say about Broner, that man said, Lucas Matisse, oh, um, ah, man, he can get it. He, he, Matisse, Madonna, if I got to get a Madonna, I got. He called them people out. Now, he obviously fought Madonna and lost, but he called out Matisse, too. And around that time, I was making videos and talking about it, and people were like, oh, Broner doesn't really want to fight Lucas Matisse. He's calling them out. It's up to Matisse to actually call his bluff. Send him a contract if you don't really believe it. But it was Matisse who said, oh, Broner lost his title, so why should I even fight him? You know what I'm saying? So that's not calling his bluff. You know what I mean? If 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 Deontay Wilder's like, oh, I'm so frustrated right now. AJ, run, run, run. And then AJ's the A-side, send him a contract. If you don't think he really wants that work, send him a contract. Same thing with um, 
Errol Spence. Errol Spence called out Canelo. He's been called. Dante's Boxing Nation got an old interview when Canelo was at 54 or Canelo weight or whatever. And Dante got an interview with Errol Spence way back then before he was even a champion where he called out Canelo. And he also has record. I've seen interviews where he said he likes Canelo as a fighter. He respects Canelo. He told me that, actually. So, again, if Golden Boy be hot, he, he, he said, even if you think, oh, because this is what the fans do. Fucking Canelo would destroy Errol. Canelo will destroy him. If he'll destroy him, take the fight. Then you get to see a fighter you like or whatever destroy an undefeated guy. You know what I'm saying? But that's what fans want. Right? Fans would rather just put the shit. I told you the new hashtag. Hashtag let's see it. Hey, the likes have just stopped and we have almost 400 people in here. We got to get the likes up to keep the stream going because that's what determines. And we can even be at more viewers, which is more hot seat for y'all, more entertainment for y'all, more in, in, in opinions for y'all from different people. We got to get the stream jumping even more. Smash the like button. A lot of people just kind of stop and just get to the tweeting. But anyway, that's what I hate in the boxing when, when it comes to these call outs if you don't think a man is serious right if he's not serious then accept his call out and then then if Errol Spence is sent a reasonable contract to fight Canelo and then he's like man I don't want to fight that guy then you say he's he don't want it but anyway this is how Kel back to see I, I always try to relate it back to what I'm saying back to what Kel Brook messed up is from what I've seen in interviews he's made a bunch of reasons why he lost like Basically, at midway, and I, I I shouldn't have been at midway. I I went from one six one six zero to midway, and all this. You lost. You know what I'm saying? Because you were still talking that chocolate brownie in the leading up to the fight. So why is it basically now? Why is it midway now? Why wasn't it? Why was it chocolate brownies before? But now it's midway. I don't like that at all. You know what I mean? Before the fight, it's, I got a chocolate right hand brownie, my brownie, the brown, I warmed it up in the oven, my chocolate right hand brownie, man's not hot and all this shit. And then after, like, <laughs> I came down from 160 on midway, it's midway, basically. I'm like, you can't do that. But anyway, now Errol Spence is calling you back out. So now he's trying to come to midway again at 154. And then there's really good, what are you going to say? You said the two losses are behind you. Your injuries are healed. You just knocked out Rabchanko. You know what I'm saying? You you knocked out Midway, realistically. You just knocked out a guy in two rounds. So if, if you get a title, now Errol Spence is on your ass again. Again. So it, it would have been better because now he's trying to call your bluff. That's how this works. In case you guys haven't heard or you're just tuning in, Errol Spence just called out Kell Brook again. He says if, if Kelbro gets a title in his new weight class at 154, he'll come up there and fight him again. And and, and then what are you going to say if you lose to him again? Like, it's, it's not, you should have just left that man alone. Errol Spence is on, like I said, he's on his Terminator shit. Man down, man down. He's on the, your keys, your clothes, your boots, give them to me. That man called out Canelo. He said he'll come up to 54 now for chocolate brownie basically right he said he wants that danny garcia work and says if that he said i hope i'm paraphrasing but this is pretty close to what he said the day of garcia rios i did a video about it he says i hope danny garcia wins tonight so we can see if he really wants action at the end of the year so now he called out danny garcia he's already said he'll fight sean porter we know he wants to fight keith thurman i mean this dude He's, he's, he's like that dog waiting to be let off the leash, I'm telling you. But anyway, let me just show y'all. Daryl Spence, verified Twitter. He says that Kell Brook gets a title, world title, I'll fight him at 154. And how can you not salute this man, Errol Spence, right now? He's in the zone. He's in that man down zone. Get the likes up, smash the like button. How can you not support that? See, and once again, I'm going to keep relating this back to Abel Sanchez. Errol Spence... He needs to act a certain way. Why would people, he's black, right? And the only reason I'm even bringing up his race is because I'm disproving what Abel said. And 
Errol Spence was an example used in Dante's Boxing Nation. What, fuck how he's acting. What is there not to like about Errol Spence? He doesn't fight like a black or whatever. He doesn't fight in this defense first style only and all this shit that fight going away and run and Mayweather and shelling up. And all. He's not fighting like that. He's calling out everybody from basically rematch with Kell Brook at a new weight class to calling out Canelo at 160 saying he'll come up there to calling out everyone top dog in his weight class, Keith Thurman, Danny Gar. I mean, what don't y'all like? Let's do, let's do a free hot seat. Shooters engage, shooters be on deck. Let's do a hot seat right now. Five more minutes? Five more minutes for what? Oh, the fight's on? Oh, I gotta go. I'm tripping. See, I just been rocking out with y'all. I gotta go. Once again, more, just listen to what men, we're talking about boxing, and li once again, boxing ego, is there something wrong with your eyes? Why are you wearing sunglasses in a dark room, laughing my ass off? Once again, you're laughing at your own joke, and you care more about, there's, Luis Ortiz about to fight Deontay Wilder, mega fight, uh, Barrera Bevo, but you care what I'm wearing. Yep, something's wrong with my eye. I have two glass eyes. I'm cross-eyed. Like, I don't care what y'all say. I'm, I don't wear glasses at the fights. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Grown men care, and they laugh at their own jokes. You care more what I look about. We trying to talk boxing. Show us your eyes. Fuck this boxing talk. Show me your fucking eyes. Oh, fuck yeah. You want to keep talking about what Abel said? Are you able to take your glasses off and show us your eyes. Like, y'all are weird as fuck. Shout out to the Cali Enigma, $5 super chat. Spence is on his Cujo shit. <laughs> that's, a, that's a good one, I like that. That's what I'm saying. What, what don't people like about Errol Spence? I know what you guys don't like about me. Show me your eyes. I am not a female. You're trying to get me to disrobe. Take your shirt off. Make yourself more comfortable and show us your eyes. Really? PlayStation controller? L1, L2? Okay. And he laughed at his own joke. He thought that shit was funny. Why are you wearing glasses, sunglasses at that in a dark room? Laughing my ass off. Well, you're the only one without an ass because you don't. Only one laughing my ass off at that. Show us your eyes. Fuck boxing talk. It's Ken Kniff from Connecticut. Automated piece of shit. Once again, shout out to all the boxing fans that are worse than animals. And that's word to Manny Pacquiao. Do, do, do. Um, I do believe um, the gays are worse than animals. And uh, God in the Bible told me to... Pa Pacquiao don't care. Pacquiao, like, he's, like, on his religious shit. And he, even if it's something offensive, Pacquiao will just say that shit when it comes to, like... Um, I do believe um, the homosexuals, they are committing sin. So I will get my strap and I will attack them. <laughs> like, what? Like, Pacquiao, you can't, you can't say stuff like that. Um, I do believe uh, gay people, man on man kiss each other um that is unacceptable <laughs> that's unacceptable <laughs> you're worse than animals <laughs> hey thank you <laughs> hey that motherfucker <laughs> this dude back here ain't got no chill like uh, like I, I will sacrifice all the gays and then your fate will depend on um it's up to my my promoter bob adam like do, 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 do. that man they got no chill when it comes to um talking about like the lgbt community that motherfucker lost hit his seat and nike deals to to speak his mind that pacquiao got he just and you know it's funny because like pacquiao be like <laughs> Pacquiao will be like, hey, Pacquiao, who are you going to fight next? Um, do, do, do. I do believe that's um, up to my promoter, Bob Air. Like, you ask him a question about who he's going to fight next, he, he don't really know. He, it's up, um, top rank, and um, it's up to my promoter, uh, Bob Air, right? 
but then you ask her, but like, hey, Pacquiao, what do you think about gay? Um, fuck them packets. Um, he's gonna bite me. He's gonna bite me. Like, damn. Where? where let me get this straight. So we ask you who we go fight. You don't know. That's that's what you should know. Um, it's up to my promoter. And then you ask him about gays. Um, I do believe um that gay people are worse than animals, and we should all open the doors to the Lord and. <laughs> Let me stop. Eagle hates Filipino. Like, I hate, you're going to say I hate everybody. Shout out to all my Filipinos. In California, Bay Area, we got a lot of Filipinos. That's why I know how to do the impersonation because I'll be around the Filipinos. They got a, I might go to, we got this Filipino place. Um, I might go there and get something to eat. I'm hungry. Um, after I eat this lumpia and I eat the, that denaguan, then I will attack all the gays. Oh my God, Pacquiao got no chill when it comes. To, is he Pacquiao's like when it comes to gay people? Pacquiao's like Chick Fil A. Chick Fil A is like <laughs> there's th a couple things they're known for: good ass food, good ass service. Have you ever been to Chick Fil A? The service is fucking awesome. Like I feel like I'm in Wakanda or some shit. Like they were like, "Welcome to Chick Fil A." It's like it'd be a sexy ass bitch. It's like, welcome to Chick Fil A. How may I serve you? I'm like, oh shit, you want my number, girl? Like, hey girl, I forgot what what I was about to order. You sounded sexy back there. Be a fat ass hoe at the drive thru. But anyway, see, how may I serve you? How may you serve me? Okay. And then they do shit that like just customary shit. Like, yeah. uh, I get some Polynesian shots out of this motherfucker. My pleasure. <laughs> like, damn, why you sounding like uh, Slavic? <laughs> the dude we keep blocking on my live streams and shit. My pleasure. It's really me, motherfucker. <laughs> like, oh shit, this Slavic. <laughs> that would be the ultimate plot twist if it was really one of these motherfuckers I block Slavic and shit. We be we. It's really me. We like a Scooby Doo episode and shit. <laughs> my pleasure. Like, wait. Wait, 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 wait. Where have I heard that voice before? It is... Ah, it's really me, Slavic. You thought you would get away? I work at Chick-fil-A, too. You're gonna have to block me every day. I'll never tell. Like, Slavic, you are insane right now. Give my fucking food. Oh, my. That would be hilarious. That would be creepy, but hilarious. But, yeah, anyway. Chick-fil-A is fucking delicious. And they're very nice. How may I serve you? Would you like a lap dance with it? Like, yeah, I do want to lap dance with my nuggets right but aside from good ass food good customer service what chick-fil-a is known for is being closed on sundays which i always seem to have an appetite for chick-fil-a on sunday you know how many times i've literally drove to the parking lot and it's just like a desolate just tumbleweeds and shit and i'm just like oh these motherfuckers is closed on sunday huh okay and then i have to go get something i don't even really want like denny's or some shit but um they're known for being close, good at food, good customer service, being close on Sundays, and not liking gay people. That's what they are known for. Like, if you listen to like the CEOs, like, yes, we value our customers and we respect everybody's family, so we choose not to labor on the Sabbath, on Sunday. Like, hey, what do you feel about gays? Um, I do believe um they are worse than animals. <laughs> like, what the fuck? <laughs> Chief Valet is not. Um, all the homosexuals, I don't give a fuck about the motherfucking trick kind of Like, they just be going in. Chick-fil-A and Pacquiao be really going in on gay people. But shout out to gay people. I don't have a problem with gay people. I'm talking about Pacquiao and Chick-fil-A. So don't try to twist it. Oh, Ego, he's he's so biased. He's, first he was racially biased. Now he's biased against gay people. I'm not biased. I'm just telling you what Pacquiao and Chick-fil-A said. So don't get it twisted. Hey, this is like a Netflix comedy special. I need to be on my Monique shit today. I'm feeling it. Hi, loves. Netflix offered me $20 in a Big Mac. And they offered Dave Chappelle, Chris Rock, and Amy Schumer much better deals. Amy Schumer, she got $5 million offered. And she renegotiated. They, they offered her 12 Dave Chappelle, he got a twomp sack and $20 million. Chris Rock, he got $16 million. We need to boycott Netflix. I love us for real.
I'm gonna be on my Netflix shit. Hey, Netflix, if you see me, remember like when Tupac was doing the California Love? He's like, hey, Faith, baby. <laughs> Come to death row, we gonna start printing our own money. That's how I'm on, I'm on my Pac shit. Hey, Netflix, if you want someone in boxing, make a funny little special, let me know. Come to death row, baby. I'm trying to politic. I, I, need, to, I need that bag. Fuck you, me. But yeah, anyway, Chick-fil-A be tripping with that. And then um, Pacquiao, definitely. He, he don't ever know the answer to the question. Um, It's up to Pretty uh, Roach what the game plan he will um, use for the Tim Bradley 14 fight that um, nobody wants to see. Like, you fighting Bradley for a 14 time? Yes, I uh, resurrected um, Tim Bradley. And then you ask him about gays. Man, man, fuck that shit. Pacquiao, just, man, fuck that. The shit worse than animals. These motherfuckers. Man on man, you serious, dog? You serious? You just gonna kiss a man on the lips, huh? You were, like, Pat, like, listen to how vicious that is. That's that. That's what Abel Sanchez did to the black community. How Pacquiao did to the to the gay community, say, it was worse than edibles. Blacks can't sell. Shit is boring to me. Look how they're fighting. Pacquiao just really outed the whole like community. That's crazy. And see, listen, I don't even I can fight predictions and say brief stuff and ego so racially biased. I ain't say shit racially biased against anybody. You know what I mean? Anybody's nationality, ethnicity, or race or anything. And they say they have all this shit and scrutinies and boycott egos and block ego. Don't watch this video, but. You got motherfuckers like Pacquiao talk about. Um, he's he said gay people are worse than animals. What? But I can't give a fight prediction without being racist. This is America. This is the America we live in. I can't say shit. Apparently, minorities can't say shit. Only certain people. Anyway. I'm gonna get ready for this fight. Can we get to 300 likes? Y'all lazy. I feel like I did like a thousand impersonations and shit. I don't even know who I am right now because I did like every impersonation. I need that Netflix special. We almost to 300. LOL, you the, you the go ego. Thank you, man. I'm just glad y'all are entertained. That's what I'm saying. I, I know for a fact who else is doing it like me in boxing. Like, who's just, like, entertainment, talking to boxing, giving you the angle of boxing. Like, I know my shit. I, I, I feel like I'm in my zone. Like, I'm comfortable. My public speaking, I worked on that. We give out L's in the hot seat. We, we here. We give you the entertainment value. It's like Walmart, one-stop shop. We give you everything you need. Fight breakdowns, all that shit. Yeah, I'm about to go eat and watch this fight. President Ego. Shout out to y'all. I'll be back after the fight. I don't know what's gonna happen, but I'm I'm not gonna come back until probably the after the Wilder or Teeth fight. Another cornball. Taco Bell brother says you gay though. Okay. This is who you guys send for me. Like, it's, it's it's sad. Like, all the jokes and stuff, I've been on fire today. I feel, I feel like people are laughing and having a good time. And that's the best you could come up with. But you're gay. Like, oh. <clears throat> Listen, I'm trying to tell y'all. If y'all just say stuff that nobody believes especially the person you're saying it at, that's not really effective. But if you said something like, hey, Ego, remember your time you spent the night with your friends, you shit the bed, you was pissing all in the bed, right? That would affect me more because if, if let's say that happened, I'd be like, oh shit, he knows, he knows me. Like, you know what I mean? Like, I don't, like De La Hoya had them pictures. I'm sure he's embarrassed about those pictures. You know what I mean? Cause someone can always be, hey, De La Hoya, Remember when you did that? You dressed up in them, them fishnet, like. But saying, "Oh, ego, you suck. Your channel sucks." 
Then I go to your channel, and you talking about we be we we be we and all this shit. That doesn't really affect me because we we know whose channel sucks. I've never opened my WWE we be we. I never opened my videos like that. Ego, but you're gay. Dun dun dun. Like, okay. I mean, who believes you? Ortiz in the eighth. Why? I don't know. I mean, we, 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 we must get, we, we, see, that motherfucker got me. We, 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 <laughs> um, we must have some new people in here because people keep asking me if I'm going to air the fight. I don't ever air the fight unless I'm there or something, but I, I don't usually stream a whole fight. Ego man, stop. You're too hilarious. We, 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 we. Basically, I'm not at at my flat waiting. Now Errol Spence is after you. You should just let that chapter close and just work to the next. You the man, been gone a while. Good to see you again, brother. Shout out to you, boxing man. Talk. Who's tipsy? Y'all crazy. I haven't I haven't had a, a drop of liquor in like six months. You know what I'm saying? I mean, if you think I'm tipsy, that's great. I ain't drinking six months, but whatever. I'm tipsy. Like, so, see, some of you don't understand. I get paid to do this. What I do? This this what I do full time. I'm trying to entertain. I'm trying to um, like advance the channel and shit like that. You you think because Kevin Hart's acting crazy in a uh, stand up comedy special that oh man he's He's drunk right now. He's a comedian, you know what I'm saying? And I'm a comedian. I don't smoke either. I don't. I cover boxing, really. That's what I do. Who you got in the Darrell Uzkatagi fight? Um, I'm picking Darrell. I seen him sparring recently for this fight camp. He looked good. He looked sharp. And and like I said, someone asked me that same question earlier. The thing is, the tide was shifting towards him before that disqualification shit anyway. So as long as he stays, st like, the thing I noticed is people, you don't know, who. no one really knew who Jose Uzcategui was like that beforehand. So I think his boxing ability, his power maybe surprised Darrell in the first two rounds of the first fight. But... Darrell made adjustments and then he was, the fight was going his way and then that freak shit happened and then Uzkata got punched by his uncle and you know what I mean the DQ and all that but he was he was he had caught on to Uzkata so as, if, as long as he picks up where he left off from what I've seen in him sparring and stuff as long as he doesn't do nothing crazy then I think he'll win the fight Ortiz mid rounds four to six Listen, it's a good fight. Like, we did a fight club, so make sure you guys go back to that and comment because I want to be able to revisit people's comments and see who, who picked right and stuff. Um, and, and, like, this is, for me, this is how I know who knows boxing and who's a man fan and who's just more so a boxing fan because a lot of people, if if you think only in a fight like this and you're just so confident to the point where you're like, going over the top to embarrass or roast someone else's opinion in this type of fight then to me you're probably more of a man fan or you have some type of predisposed bias because once it listen why are you wearing sunglasses so once again in the middle of me talking and breaking down fights it's why am i wearing sunglasses like you care more about me wearing sunglasses than wilder ortiz tonight I just don't get it. That's why it always throws me off. Like, it always throws me off. What's up with the glasses? Take them off and show us your eye. Like, this is weird. Anyway, what I was saying is, Luis Ortiz has a chance. Deontay Wilder has a chance. No matter who you're picking. So the people who are, like, over the top with it, like, there's no way Chicken Leg Wilder Bum Squad could win, then you're already 
proving that you're biased. If you think a guy with that type of power at heavyweight has absolutely no chance, even if you're picking Luis, that's not a problem. It's okay to pick Luis Ortiz. But if you're saying he has absolutely no shot or you're saying Luis Ortiz, all that Cuban shit, he didn't know you, and you're all rah, rah, rah. I don't, those are the people I don't believe in boxing because it's like, it's like all talk. You know what I mean? If you talk boxing from a reasonable palate and you're like respectable to the, the combatants and the, the competition, then I tend to believe you a little bit more. Like if you're like, hey, I'm picking Golovkin to beat Canelo. I think he figures something out in the eighth round. And the, then I can respect that. Or if you say, oh, Canelo, um, as long as he works on his stamina, he'll be good against Golovkin. He has the head move and you're breaking it down. But when you just like, oh, fucking bitch Nello. He ain't never did shit. He lost to everybody. Like, I can't relate to that. Like, I'm not no little infant or kid. You know what I'm saying? Another clown. His name is Ed Debu. Some, I don't know, whatever. I don't even know how to pronounce your name. You talk too much. Let watch first. Where are you from? Because that wasn't even a complete sentence. Where are you from? Your name is Edubuele or something. Where are you from? I need to know. Because I'm trying to understand your sentence structure. Edubuele, or whatever your name is. Where are you from? You don't have to answer. I just want to know where you're from. See, now he went ghost on us. <laughs> ghost recon. Like, ain't that a bitch? People come to my live stream and tell me I talk too much. Like, what the fuck? You thought I was going to have Siberian tigers jumping through hoops? Like, <laughs> get to the show. You talk too much. Like, honestly, what did you think was going to be on the channel where it's like, where it says live chat? You know what I'm saying? You talk too much. Like, what were you expecting? You thought I was going to have prostitutes and doing the Macarena? Like, what, what? I don't understand. You talk too much, but I clicked on your video. Sorry for that. Where are you from, man? I'm just curious. I'm talking about you talk too much. Someone said he was from Wakanda. The vibranium? Dr. Claw, we must get him. Did we get him? Someone said he's from Wakanda. See, y'all tripping. Anyway, whatever. Dr. Claw must not get the vibranium. The Black Panther. It is. It does smell like shit, doesn't it? You talk, you talk too much. Too much talking. Try again, motherfucker. Do you know who you are, Dilly? No, I do not have a goddamn cover case. The pink motherfucker. <laughs> oh my gosh. Anyway, I'm about to go watch these fights. Shout out to Wakanda, man. Damn. My my shooter, Ken Corleone, hit you with the, the vampire in Brooklyn. And he went, Shut the fuck up. God damn it. <laughs> Who's Kadegi piss blood? Oh, I gotta go watch the fight. Y'all saying fight shit. I'm out. Holla at the kid. Let's get some last minute likes. Shout out to Wakanda. The vibranium must not leave the continent. Did we get him? Try again, motherfucker. Paul Blart. Y'all talking about movies that tanked. It is and always will be part of Wakanda. Oh, the commission is good. What? Oh, I gotta go watch. What, is, what happened with the rail fight? It's on right now? Oh, he's not. Why did he piss blood? I don't. I, he's on a period or something? What, what the fuck? Y'all gotta tell me something. So this is his menstrual cycle, the time of the month. Don't you piss blood once a month? I, no. Why is he pissing blood? Did the fight start? I don't understand why someone is pissing blood before, unless it's a girl on her period or something. Like, you know, when your period starts off kind of heavy and turns kind of light. Like, 
No. Why is he pissing blood? Somebody, please tell. <laughs> male menopause, motherfucker. What? Why is he? No, I get it. Did we get him? Like, I, I, I get what I get what you are saying in Wakanda. Listen, I understand what you guys are saying. I understand. He pissed the blood, right? I understand that part. I'm asking if the fight hasn't started. Why? I got to talk to y'all like Brad Pitt in, in Fight Club. If the fight has not started, why is he pissing blood? Okay, it's delayed because Jose was caught to eat pissed blood for his pre-fight drug test. Alex says shut up, but you can leave. That's weird. I, I don't know. I, I've never heard of someone pissing blood. Like, Rules and Provodnikov, you fought Lucas Matisse and you pissed blood. That was after the fight. So, that's weird. He's he's pissing blood now. That's fucked up for Darrell if, if the fight, something happened. Let me go see. Let me go check it in. We got motherfuckers on their periods and people telling me to shut up. So, I will shut up because I'm about to get out here and watch this. Let's get some last minute likes in the building. I will be back. Live stream style. Shout out to Ego Army, Ego Mafia. We are the mob money on top of boxing. Let's get, get, get it. Last minute likes. Run through it. Damn, 90 dislikes. I can't stop it, though. Ego Army. <laughs> this is funny. Hey, get to the boxing. You're doing all these fucking goddamn... Goddamn impersonation. Abel was right. Blacks just want to clown around. Do impersonations. Get to the goddamn boxing. Fuck this. I'm leaving 90 likes on my 90 accounts. I don't. Alex Hernandez sounds stupid as fuck. Go and shut up. Why are you here? Just live. You, you holding up my fight time. I just want to know why are you here? He says shut up. Go and shut up. Why are you here? I know the fight hasn't started. I'm just talking to Alex, just talking. Cause he's talking crazy. He's like. Ray Brown says boxing ego, crackhead looking t-shirt laughing my ass off once again you're laughing at your jokes before anyone has the opportunity or will laugh at your joke show me your eyes laughing my ass off a second laugh at your joke that is not funny and he says gay looking motherfucker this is who y'all send for me i guess this is supposed to rile me up show us your eyes like my shirt's actually dope this is guns and roses dick wad guns and roses is dope on the night train I want to see you bleed. That was, I guess someone said that too. Who's Katagi and shit? Because from what y'all tell me, that motherfucker bleeding. I want to see you bleed. Welcome to the jungle. It's our fun and game. Man, you're real like animals. <laughs> Who's Katagi? I want to see you bleed. Shut up, no, 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 no. Now I'm about to go watch some fight. Yo. <laughs> Shut up, Ego, with that gay shirt. That shirt sucks. Guns of Roses, they don't suck. Ego, you look like Isaac from Fight Night. Once again, on the heels of four fights, five fights, whatever it is, people care what I look like in my gay shirt. Shout out to Slash. I'm out. I'll be back. Y'all can talk some more shit after. Shout out to... Um, Augustine, he said, hi, bro, how are you doing? How are you doing? I'm good. About to just go watch these fights. Mad celebs in the building. Who's at the Kovalev fight? That sucks because they shouldn't have put that on at the same night because the Wilder fight is in the same city. That's doesn't make sense to me. Fight's cleared. I'm about to go watch it. Holler at me. Thank you. Salute. Shout out to you that support the channel. Shout out to Super Chats. Shout out to my shooters. I will be back. And to all the haters, Throwing shots at Eagle, you only get half a bar. Fuck y'all people. I'm out.